And so, Colonel York Alf, it would appear that the Crown Prince left this hunting lodge at midnight and disappeared. Yes, Excellency. My men have searched the country high and low, from the highest mountain to Madame Olga's tea rooms and massage parlor. And you can't get much lower than that. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you realize that unless we find the crown prince before the coronation, Duke Boris will see his power. <coughs> How is my dear cousin, the crown prince? Boris, you are a pig. But of course, now you will miss your coronation. And you will claim the throne of Pluritania. Naturally. You forget one thing, Boris. There are several men in Turitania who resemble me. True, my cousin. And my ministers are sure to get one of them to impersonate. Not at your coronation. And why not? Because, dear cousin, they are all down here with you. <laughs> You mean find a double to impersonate the crown prince. That is plan B. Yes, I have already checked. All the doubles have disappeared also. Then we will have to use plan C. Plan C? That is where we grab all the money we can lay our hands on and scarper. Colonel Yakov, that is a monstrous, disgraceful suggestion. Yes, Excellency. But worth considering. <laughs> Dear friend. Dear friend. <laughs> After all the years we've been engaged. On our way to Pluritania. Mm, on our honeymoon. Yes. <laughs> oh, I do hope I shan't be disappointed. Oh, I promise you. I'm told it's quite small, but very beautiful. What is it? Pluritania. Oh, that. Yes, well, I heard a lot about that from my mother. Oh, why has she been there? No, but when she had that boarding house in Brighton, she had the old Grand Duke staying there. Oh, do you remember him? No, he left nine months before I was born. <laughs> oh. Oh. <clears throat> Welcome to Pluritania. Thank you. Have you anything to declare? Uh, no, I don't think so. <clears throat> Have you any paper clips, livestock, toilet water, firearms, telescopes, or piano music? No, I don't think so. Have we there? No, of course we haven't, Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Check your luggage and make sure, would you? Have you any flowering shrubs, trees, plants, pots of glue, rolls of linoleum, coconut ice, or dirty postcards? <laughs> you have no dirty postcards? No. Like to buy some? Captain. <laughs> uh, uh, your Highness, forgive me, please. I didn't recognize you with your glasses on. Oh, your Highness. No, 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 hang on, please. Uh, just a minute. You're here. Would you mind? <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's a nice room they've given us. Yes, I don't know why we didn't stay up there in it. <laughs> oh, Arnold, now there's plenty of time for that. I want to go out and do some sightseeing. You know, look at the shops. Can we have a drink first? Oh, all right. Come on, you are right, Nikov. He does look like him. You know what to do. Yes, Highness. <laughs> steady, steady, please. What would you like, sir? Uh, oh, nothing for me, dear. I'll have a uh, shandy. Oh, Arnold, do be careful. You know it goes straight to your head. <laughs> shandy. <laughs> Nitzburg, the capital of Pluritania, is dominated by the vast and brooding castle of the local city of Pluritania. These are open to the public, except when occupied. Occupied by who? Well, whoever it is that occupies dungeons. Oh, perhaps we could go down and see them. Yes, of course we can. <laughs> Excuse your drinks, oh. please. <laughs> <coughs> uh, no, 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 we only ordered one. For Coronation Week, you get two drinks for the price of one. Oh, thank you. How much are they? Nine million nakaroos. Oh, Arnold, how much is that in English money? Oh. I'm sorry, but we have the inflation. Yeah, so are we if we drink that long. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Drink as much as you can. Anything that is left over, you get a refund. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Back off. He 
living image of the crown prince. See who he is. Pardon me, sir, but don't I know you from somewhere? Well, don't think so. I'm Arnold Basket from Balham, and this lady is my wife, Vera. Yes, and we're on our honeymoon. Oh, very nice, too. But may I advise you to take certain precautions? I beg you. It's very dangerous for you here. Why here? It wasn't a Balham. Oh, Arnold. <laughs> Hey, would you like one of these drinks? We haven't touched them. That's most kind. It is, Gus. Yes. Hmm. Now, the person. Poor man, do you think you'll be all right? Perfectly. He is a friend of mine. He often goes off in the warm weather. Does he? But I will look after him. Well, I feel quite upset. Oh, Arnold, could I have a cup of tea or something? Here, well, you have that. No, 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 no. Do not drink anything here. No? You saw what happened to him. <laughs> May I recommend Madame Augustine? Oh, is it nice there? Fantastic. There you will be properly looked after. Oh. This I can promise you. Thank you very much. Arnold, yes. uh, do, do you think you can find out if there's a ladies' room here? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll ask the waitress when she comes. Yes, all right. Sit down. Yeah. It's all there. I can see that. <laughs> so now you're on our side. With all my heart, I am noted for my loyalty. What about your loyalty to Duke Boris? I am also noted for my treachery. What is it that you want me to do? Englishman. He must be persuaded to help us. Don't worry, Excellency. I shall persuade him. <laughs> oh, Arnold, do something! Oh, don't do that! Well, can't, can't you ask him? Oh, I don't speak the language, do I? Well, uh, couldn't you sort of... <laughs> mime it? Oh, well! Yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll ask somebody. Yes. I, I can usually make myself understood. Yes, sir. Don't worry. Oh, anybody here? Shop? Hello, cheeky. Oh, you speak English? Like a nobody's business. Oh, well, uh, perhaps you can help me. Where's the ladies? How many ladies are you wanting? No, no. Ladies, ladies' room. Oh, you want ladies in your room? No. You, you don't follow me. No, I don't follow you. You go to room first. Ladies follow later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Arnold, have they got one? Vera, this is not a proper tea room. Well, of course it is. I mean, it's written outside in English. Tea and crumpets. Uh, that is very misleading. Oh, I'll go and find someone. Vera, Vera, no, wait. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, yes, madame. You want a tea? Yes, but first, have you got a ladies' room? Certainly, madame. Me oh, <laughs> Zana! Now we have him alone, huh? You are wanting tea and... Uh... Uh, no, just tea, thank you. Then perhaps you are wanting your fortune, uh, No, thank you. No, oh, but I am doing it for nothing. I, I don't care what you do for nothing. <laughs> oh, you are wild and a passionate, like a raging tiger. No, I'm not. But say so in your eyes. Uh, uh, would you mind getting up, please? Oh, no, sir! Okay, Let go of me! Yeah. Help huh? somebody else! Oh, you the I never touched her. What is going on here? Excellency, this man has assaulted one of my waitresses. I did not. Who are you? I, sir, am the Prime Minister of Floritania, Count Arrakis. Count me what? No, 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 it's my title. You may leave us. Please sit down. Thank you. It would seem that you are in serious trouble with the... Viola! What? Duke Boris is here. Here where? Well, he came in the back way, but there are men at the front. You'd better hide, quick. Wait, what for? Because your life may depend upon it. Oh. And above all, keep silent. Yeah. Under... <laughs> Pleasure. 
They are looking for an English couple. Have they arrived yet? No. Then we shall wait for them. Are you sure they will come here, Your Highness? Do not question my plans, Nikov. I have told them to come here. If these British disobey my orders, I will have them flogged to death. But I may have them flogged to death anyway. I feel drunk, Highness. How can we be drunk, Nikov? We have only had two bottles. We are drunk. No, we are drunk. I'm going back to England. No, 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 please, please. I need you here. Need me? I'm not going to stay here and be flogged to death. I will place you under my personal protection. Please, I'm on my honeymoon. Perhaps you'll care to spend it with me. No, thank you. I've got the one. I mean, it's a pair of you. I'll take it as a royal hunting lodge. There you will be safe. Here us. Here us. Excellency, <laughs> what of these two? Oh, uh, dogs! Uh, keep them here as long as you can. They will give us trouble when they recover. Why don't we just... <coughs> and give the place a bad reputation? But we are now on the side of the crown prince. Exactly. And the sooner he escapes, the better. You think we can help him? Yes. With the signet ring of Duke Boris. <laughs> Oh, I wish somebody would explain what's happening. Well, I keep trying to. Those men are after me because I look exactly like the Crown Prince. Naturally. But don't worry. We have a plan. I have arranged for the Crown Prince to impersonate you. Me? Yes. He will gallop off into the forest somewhere and lure them away from you. But won't the Prince be in danger? <laughs> no, no, no. They would never attack the Prince. <laughs> it's him they're after. Me? <laughs> Well, what do I do while well, he's impersonating me? You will impersonate him. What for? To confuse them. Well, it's certainly confusing me. We are doing this for your husband's sake. Oh, thank you. I'm very grateful. But we are on our honeymoon. Yes, yes, of course. So first, we must train him as the use of his regalia. Pardon? <laughs> Load of baubles. <laughs> yes, yes, I think it will pass. Oh, look, I'm awfully tired. Would you mind if I went to bed? Yes, can I go too, please? No, 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 please, not yet. I have something to show you. Yeah, well, so is he. Come on, Arnold. Yes, no, no, no. You go to bed by all means, dear lady. He will join you later. See you later. <laughs> right, first we will instruct you in swordsmanship. Now, no, hang on, I, I can't see without those. <laughs> then you must learn. The crown prince has perfect eyesight. Well, I think we shall start with a P. <laughs> you must learn how the crown prince does it. Oh, does he do it differently? <laughs> Not differently, merely correctly. Here, take this. Oh, take it there. Now the Major will teach you to fence. On guard. No, no. Here, here is the Major. Oh, hello. Oh, blood. Come down, you coward. Come on. Yes, I think he needs his glasses.
punish this man. Stop it and kill us all. Stop him. Those beautiful flowers are they did my film. Stop him. Stop him. Did I win? Oh, and then we'll have you finished then. Yes. They've gone. Mm -hmm. Right. So, just pop into the bathroom and then... Yes, Arnold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody here. Whom does that belong? Ah, then she has arrived. Who? The Grand Duchess Ingrid of Karovia, your betrothed. Ah, yes. What does she look like? Of course you have never seen her, Highness. You tell Count Yorakis I am free. I will see if I can find her. Highness. I beg your pardon. Why, what have you done? I had the most dreadful experience. What, in the...? Yes. There were six of us in there. Six?! I thought we would never get out alive. What, six of you in the...? Yes, we could not move. Well, I'm sure you couldn't. And my ankle is very badly hurt. It was the chain. The chain? The chain around my ankle. What were you doing in there, standing on your head? Let me not speak of it, my dear. Now I am free, free to claim everything that is mine. Oh, yes, well, I'm not stopping you. Of course, I uh, I cannot manage it on my own. What? I need your support. Will you help me? Well, I won't hinder you. Now, you stop talking in that funny voice and you come straight to bed. <laughs> that is very kind of you. <laughs> but first, I must uh, go to the bathroom. What, again? <laughs> oh, oh, Highness. Duke Boris is upon us with his regiment. You must flee. Never. Never catch me unprepared again. Follow me. And be prepared to die for your country. After you, Colonel. No, after you, Count. <laughs> hello, hello. What have we here? <laughs> Search for the Crown Prince. I do not wish to be disturbed. Oh, my little darling. Can you get your hands off me? Do not struggle. I intend to exercise my prerogative. Oh, you stupid beast! Oh, help! 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 Anybody call? The Crown Prince! Get off! Get off! For me? Surrender! What have you flogged to death? Got on your nose. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Go on, go on. Go on. Wait. Go on. 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 Grand Duchess Ingrid of Karovia, your fiancé, honey. Hey, you look 
exactly like my wife. I can't understand it. I didn't tell you. My mother had a boarding house too. <laughs> And whomsoever shall offer aid or comfort to the enemies of Parliament shall have his chattel sequestrated. Signed, Oliver Cromwell. From Charles Stuart, King of England. Any person who supports Oliver Cromwell shall have his chattel sequestrated. Bloody old fire, they've got me both ways. Oh, there you are, Jethro. What's that you're reading? I've just had two threatening letters. Well, read them later. My brother Lovelace is off to the war. Not before time. Lovelace is going to fight for you. Oh, he's not fighting for me. Jethro, have you turned against the king? I haven't turned against anyone. I, I've, I've merely turned neutral. Well, you can't be neutral. Oh, can't I? Just you watch me. I'm not being sequestrated. Three weeks ago, you were out shouting, Long live King Charles! And three weeks ago, King Charles was winning. The king may yet win. And then where will you be? Right behind him, cheering. Oh, you are despicable. And when I think what my gallant brother is doing... But what is he doing? Lovelace is preparing at this very moment to give his all. <laughs> <laughs> Devil, I'm a cavalier. Well, you'll get a thick here if you don't give over. Sarah, I merely wish to give you a soldier's farewell. Well, give it to me when you come back. Well, that won't be the same, will it? Besides, I may never come back. Sarah, the trumpet sounds. All I want is a kiss. My horse is waiting. Well, go out and kiss him. <laughs> Sarah, you're artless. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Would you have me ride off into battle desolate for one of your kisses? Well, all right, then, but you'll have to hurry up. All I want is a kiss. And that's all you're getting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that your trumpet? No. The hilt of my sword. Oh. <laughs> oh, it is your trumpet. What are they sounding? Prepare to mount. Oh, in that case, I'm all right. <laughs> Lovely, they are calling for you. Yes, I can hear them. Farewell, my brave and gallant brother. Return to us victorious, or not at all. Yeah, I second that. Yes, you do. Farewell, Master Lovelace. Farewell, Sarah. Is there anything you want before you go? Yes. Lovelace. What? I think he's trying to tell you something. Well, I haven't, my beauty. <laughs> oh, is that your trumpet? <sighs> Two days now, and no news of the battle. Still, I'm sure the king has won. I hope so. I don't know which way to turn. Do you think it looks like him? It looks like who? Why, King Charles, of course. Only I haven't done his beard yet. Mm, I should leave him as he is if I were you. Then if you stick a wart on him, it could be Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> Horsemen approaching. I saw them out the kitchen window. Perchance tis Lovelace returning victorious. Yes, well, perchance it's not. So hold off on that bit. Oh, do quiet! Roundheads. Roundheads? Hundreds of them. But are you certain? Positive. You can tell by the way the hairs. Sarah, get me that pudding basin. <laughs> Are you harboring any royalist fugitives? Fugitives? From the battle. Does that mean they were defeated? <laughs> <laughs> defeated? We scatter them like chaff before the wind. The war is as good as over. Oh, well, congratulations. Oh, hang on, love. Would you like a bunker? Oh, sit 
Jethro. <laughs> I hope, ma'am, we don't disturb you. Oh, no, uh, not at all. I was, uh, I was just embroidering a portrait of our beloved leader, Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> Indeed, ma'am, I'm flattered. Are you Cromwell? I am. Why, I'm, I'm so sorry I, I didn't recognize you. you. You don't look a bit like your portraits. <laughs> and I certainly don't look a bit like that one. <laughs> uh, no, no, well, of course, I, uh, I haven't finished it yet. You see, I haven't done your beer. You haven't done my beer? Uh, yes, that, uh, that fuzzy bit around your chin. That's a, a tankard of ale that you're lifting and quaffing. Indeed. And what is all that long hair about my shoulders, oh, hmm? gracious me, that's not long hair. Indeed, no. <laughs> what is it? Froth. Froth? It's very fizzy beer we drink round here. I see. Well, as long as it isn't hair, for there is one thing I cannot abide, tis a man with long hair. <laughs> Those are my sentiments exactly, Joe. I am Sir Jethro Houndbottom, and this is my wife, Lady Kate. We're just plain country gentry, you know. Nothing fancy about us. I'm glad. Then I take it you support our cause. One hundred percent, sir. Uh, don't we, love? Oh, we do. Indeed, we do. Good. Then you won't mind putting us up for a few days, hmm? Well, I'm sure you'd be most welcome, but there is a very good inn down in the village. <laughs> you mean there was? <laughs> was? Yes, we burnt it down. For, for any particular reason? Indeed, yes, sir. It was harboring a cavalier fugitive, and there was a portrait of King Charles behind the bar. Yes, well, I expect you'd like to look around the house. <laughs> Indeed, I would. Where does that lead to, ma'am? Uh, to the kitchen. I'll follow you. Who's that? It's me, Lovelace. Get away from here. The place is full of round eggs. So's the garden. I've been hiding in the manure heap. <sighs> we'll get back in it again. No, 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 please. You've got to help me. I'm a fugitive. I'm wounded and I'm starving hungry. Don't go away. Yeah, there's a walnut and a bandage. Now off it. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna come in. You, you can't. Let me in. No! I'm coming in. No, you can't. All right, then I'll go round the kitchen. Yeah, hang on now. Let go! You can't go to the kitchen. Cromwell's there, Oliver Cromwell. Now pull the other one. I'm telling you, he is. You'll have to go somewhere else. You'll have us all home, drawn and quartered. Now go somewhere else. There is nowhere else I can go. Oh, go to France. Right. How do I get there? Quite simple. Yes. Take them feathers out your hat. Yes. Hold them in either hand. Yes. Stuff them up your jumper and bloody well fly off. <laughs> Are you going? Yes. To France? No. Where to? Round the kitchen window. Yeah. Oh, you can't go to the kitchen. He's there. Who is? You are. Oh, to go away. Who are you calling to? Uh, ah, yes, it was one of your soldiers. He's got a message for you. Ah, uh, it might be urgent. We'd best get back to the kitchen. Yeah. No, uh, excuse me, sir. No, no, not, not to the kitchen. No, he, he went out through the hallway. This way, sir. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> not at all. I... They seem quite nice. I'm sure they won't harm us. Oh. You want to bet? <gasps> Lovelace! You wouldn't let me in. Are you all right? No, I am not. I'm wounded and I'm starving hungry. Jethro, what are we going to do? Give him another walnut. Oh, my poor brother, starving and wouldn't fall. Oh, perhaps you're right. You've got to hide me, please. Hide you? But where? Up in Sarah's bedroom? Oh. No! No, wait! The secret hiding place! Oh, don't be silly, love. That door's jammed. It hasn't been used in 50 years. No, you're right. Cromwell's coming! No. Oh, well, quick, under the table. Yet yeah, not you, love, no him. Oh, lovely! Oh. All right, all right, all right. I can't find this messenger anywhere. Oh, heaven preserve us. What's that? Well, uh, well it's not me. Uh, no, it, it, it's Farmer Hodges. Farmer Hodges? Yes. But he ought to be put down. Where is he? Uh, no, it, I mean, it's not Farmer Hodges, it's his farm. You see, it's always the same where the wind's coming from the east. I see. Well, in that case, sir, make sure my bedroom faces west. Oh. <laughs> By heck, that was close. You nearly had us home drawn and fumigated. Was that Cromwell? Yes. It's my duty to kill him. You damn nearly did. Well, I will if you don't hide me. A secret hiding place! She's done it. Get in it, quick. 
much rather I'd up in your bedroom, Sarah. Oh, stop arguing, Lovelace, and get in there. He ought to have a bath. Oh, talk sense, girl. Where can he have a bath? Up in Sarah's room. He could have it in the kitchen. He only wants a bath. You speak for yourself. I'll go and boil his water. I'll help you. Hang on. Hang on. Give me something to eat first. Oh, for heaven's sake, here you are. What's that? The dog's dinner, but he hasn't touched it. I'll shut the door. All right. Oh, don't go away. I'll think of something. All slipped. You nearly had my head off. Yeah, well, get back in there. You'll have all our heads off. His bath's ready. Well, he can't have it. Why? That door's jammed. Who did that? I did. There's something on the inside. Thank you. Lovelace, do go and have your bath. Oh, come and get in the barrel. <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I found it. Oh, good. Well, now come outside and do it. Yes, I'd love to, but it's just dropped off. What's that? <laughs> Then we're back where we started, aren't we? What are we going to do now? You'll just have to stay in there, won't stay you? Stay in here! Now, what can we find to hang over that hole you've made? Oh. I've buried your clothes. Thank you. Can I have some more hot water? Oh, yes, lovely. Thank you. Go! 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 It's boiling. Look where you're pouring it. I'd rather not, thank you. <laughs> Hold it. Oh, it's heavy. Well, it oh. would be. Grandfather weighed 22 stone. On your head. Oh, oh. oh uh, hello, General. I was uh, uh, just hanging up a picture. So I observe, ma'am. Who is it, hmm? Uh, my husband's grandfather. I thought you'd like him up there. He was a very stout supporter of Parliament. <laughs> yes, I can see he was. He must have weighed all of 22 stone. Hmm? What do you make of them, sir? I would trust this household just as far as I could throw it. Why don't we arrest them and have done with it, sir? No, 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 Colonel, no! We must proceed with legality. Give them enough rope and they will hang themselves. Well, I don't trust them, sir. Any of them. They're all royalists through and through. Look at that fat rogue on the wall. Why, I guarantee even he would do us injury if he could. <laughs> Do you? Oh, you won't. No, 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 wait. Yes, you heard what the man said. It is just possible, just, that he may offer us an explanation. Uh, yes, I can. You see, I was helping the wife hang that picture and I was knocking the nail in. From inside? Mm -hmm. Ah, ah. Well, we always knock the nail in from inside. Then if the hammer slips, it doesn't damage the panelling. But there is already a hole in the panelling. Yes, well, you see, the hammer slipped. Come out of it, sir. Uh, well, tell him to put his sword away. Colonel, put your weapon up. Yes, sir. <laughs> A secret hideaway. Well, it's not really secret. I mean, everybody knows it's there. Yes, we do now. Such it, Captain. Yes, sir. Come on, Mr. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> An ostrich fellow. Oh, is it? And who do you suppose this came off? An ostrich? Do you by any chance keep ostriches? Uh, no, but then you know what it's like in these old houses with birds uh, fluttering in and out? <laughs> That's enough, sir. We intend to search the house. Well, for ostriches? <laughs> they also nest in old houses. <laughs> I'll give you a hand to look. There must be one. To... You, sir, will stay where you are. That's what I just said. <laughs> oh, dear, isn't it? It's getting chilly. Can I have some more hot water? Sergeant, take that squad and search the outbuildings. I'll look in the kitchen. <laughs> There's a cavalier somewhere in this house. It's uh, only the pantry. It's locked. Uh, yes, we uh, we keep it that way uh, to uh, to stop the servants pilfering. Uh, would you mind opening it, please? Uh, I can't. Why? Well, the um, the serving wench is in there. Pilfering? Huh. Uh, no, 
but uh, she was, so I, I, I locked her up as a sort of punishment. Uh, may I see her? I'm afraid you can't. Why? Well, um, if you must know, she's uh, taking a bath. Uh, would that be part of her punishment? <laughs> Well, uh, in a way, um, yes, yes, it's, it's a sort of uh, a symbolic thing, you know, to, to, to uh, wash her free from sin. I mean, you being a Puritan, you'd appreciate that, wouldn't you? Uh, no, we wouldn't. Now, kindly open the door. Captain, would you gaze upon the unclad body of an innocent young girl? Oh, she's innocent. Oh, perfectly. Then why did you lock her up? <laughs> well, to, um, to keep her that way. I mean, with all your soldiers about. You won't harm her. Now, open the door, please. Well, I... I did warn you. Your gaze upon her unclad body. The shame could destroy her. Oh, Captain, have mercy upon that poor, innocent, pure and unsullied creature. <laughs> Does anybody want me? I shouldn't think so. Uh, that's the serving wench. Then who are you? I'm the cook. I'll be scrubbing her back. Why? Wouldn't let me scrub her front. <laughs> uh, now, are you satisfied? No, madam. We are not. Inquiries in the village have revealed that you have a brother, a certain Captain Lovelace. I understand he is lurking in this vicinity. I summon you all to an interrogation. And when did you last see your brother-in-law? Uh, <laughs> uh, quite recently. How recently? Uh, about six months ago. Did you know him to be a cavalier? Certainly not. Had you no suspicions of his inclinations? Funnily enough, no. But surely you could tell by his dress. He wasn't wearing one at the time. Oh, uh, no, uh, what I mean is... <laughs> What do you mean? Well, I didn't know he was a cavalier. Not, not then, at least. When did you know what he was? When he took his lute out and started strumming it, <laughs> singing that terrible song as he did. Do you remember the song he sang? Oh, yes. <clears throat> he has helped on to hit my... Just wait. He... A royalist song, sir. I know. I was horrified being a staunch pillarman parliamentarian. I, I took his lute and smashed it across his ear, all saying, Be gone, sir, and never darken my door again. And then what happened? Ha! Ah, well, you see, the wife hit him with her cornet, uh, the serving wench struck him with her violin, the gardener threw the harpsichord at him, and I gave him a sharp poke with me piccolo. And then? Well, he fell to the ground, so we all started kicking him. And then what did he do? Well, he picked himself up and said, This is the last time I come round here for a music musical evening. Have you seen him since? No, sir, and I don't want to. You may stand down. Uh, I mean up. Oh, yes. Sa ahead, th yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> call the cook. Is that me? You are the cook, aren't you? Oh, I am, yes. Well, now, don't be distressed. No harm shall come to you if you but tell the truth. It's the shame of it. I've never been had up before. How long have you been employed here? Oh, for years. Ever since I was a boy. Since you were a what? <laughs> For you, ever since I was a boisterous young girl of 16. <laughs> How long ago was that? Ooh, five or six years. I can't count, really. No, you most certainly can't. Oh, General, he's been very unkind, isn't he? Yes, 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 you're right, you're right. I think that was somewhat uncalled for, Captain. I, sorry, madam, I meant you don't look 23. Oh, I'm sure I do. I mean, it's one of my off days. <laughs> you, you appear to be in some discomfort. It's, 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 these stays, they're killing me. I hope they won't affect your testimony. So do I. Were you present during the musical evening just mentioned? No, I was preoccupied elsewhere. Doing what? Plucking a bird for Christmas. All evening? Well, it wouldn't keep still. Have you ever seen this before? No, not unless it came off the bird I was plucking. This madam came from an ostrich. Good heavens. No wonder it was tough. She said it was a turkey. Do we have any more questions? No. no. I think not. Very well, madam. You may go about your duties. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, uh, what about us? Ah, yes. You, sir, and your wife will remain confined here during the remainder of our stay. But we haven't done anything. Oh, well, and I shall take care to see that you don't. Take them away. <laughs> Oh, 
There's no justice, is there? Three days we've been up here, and I, I bet you he's had the run of the place. Well, I suppose he has, although we haven't seen him. Thank you, Sergeant. Dinner is served. But Torres Deluxe, a la Cromwell. Ooh. What is it? Stu. Well, what's in it? I think it's rabbit. You think it's rabbit? Well, it was all furry and had four legs. But it could be anything. Oh, it could be anything, but I think it's rabbit. But, Lovelace, dear, you cooked it. And surely you know what a rabbit looks like. Oh, of course I do. But it's hard to tell after the dog's had a go at it. The dog had a go at it first. No, second. Oh. The cat had a go at it first, only he didn't like it. Lovelace, why are you doing this to us? How dare you give us this muck to eat? Oh, muck, is it? What about the muck you gave me? The dog's dinner, that's what you gave me. That was different. But anyway, the dog hadn't touched it. He's not so fussy now. He's had half of that. Oh. How can you be so ungrateful after all we did for you? After all you've done for me? Shove me in a cupboard, nearly had my head off. Yes, well, that was your own fault. And leaving me outside the window, starving and wounded. But we let you in. You did not let me in, I let myself in. Look, one word from us and you'd be done for. And so would you, mate. Oh, I've had years of it from you. Begrudging every penny I ever borrowed. Well, now you're living on my charity. So just you watch it, or you don't get no pudding. You know what you can do with your pudding? No, Jethro, wait. Look, Lovelace, I'm sorry if we've upset you, but why won't you let Sarah do the cooking? Well, Sarah stays in bed all day. Stays in bed all day? Yes, and being the cook, I have to share her room. Well, there's only the one bed up in that room. That's right. So you're sleeping in Sarah's bed? Well, she only lets me have it at night. Have what? The bed. There isn't room for two of us in there. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. Yes, so I sleep all night and she sleeps all day. Well, what does she do all night? I don't know, but she bought herself four new dresses. We're leaving. The enemy have rallied and we intend to engage them. So, thank you for your hospitality. Yes, and thank you for yours. There is just one thing, your cook. What about her? She is undoubtedly the worst cook I have ever encountered. She burns everything when it isn't half raw. Her paste is like cast iron, and I can't touch her pudding. You're very nice. Nevertheless, gluttony is a deadly sin, and we must do all we can to fight it. Oh, we must. So, as I am short of a cook, I'm taking her with us. Come along, madam. Oh. oh. Oh, 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 Must I? I've been so happy here. Uh, do I have... What's that? Cannon fire. They must be giving them roundheads a bit of an hammering. <laughs> oh, what of poor Lovelace? He may still be cooking for them. Well, if he is, there won't be many of them left. <laughs> it's the Cavaliers! <laughs> Pardon the intrusion, ma'am, but His Majesty would like to use this house as his headquarters. Oh, we'd be delighted. We're all royalists here, aren't we, Jethro? Uh, uh, yes, love. Yes. Could you show me around, ma'am? Only there may be some roundhead fugitives in the vicinity. By all means. Oh, what's the hell there? I don't know. Oh, hang on. It's Lovelace. I was told his uniform and escaped. They're after me. Who? The Roundheads? Oh, the Cavaliers. You'll have to hide me again. Again? Not bloody likely. No, no, Get out no, of no, it. Wait a I've had enough. Oh, Lovelace. I'm sorry. I've been in it again. Oh, yeah, I can smell you. Hey, what are you doing to here? You had it off? No, I haven't had time. I'll go and pull your boots. Hey, 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 take your dress off. Why, are you going to cook again? Yes. I've got something down here I want to put in the oven. <laughs> Not the English, they are coming. My horse has been killed. Escape where you can. But what of you? Oh, they will capture me and hold me for ransom. But France needs you to fight for her. Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> oh, yes. We will change clothes. <laughs> no, Gaston, stop it. There is no time for that. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. 
Not half as much as we will surprise your navy. <laughs> oh, when did we last have a decent summer? Well, I don't know. 1380, that was a nice year. Oh, that was a nice year. That was a lovely year. That was the year we had the Black Death. Well, apart from that, it was nice. I don't care what you say, Hubert. I can feel it in the air. Feel what? Trouble. Doom, disaster, call it what you will. Now, blimey, don't start all that again. You may scoff at me if you like, but I am never wrong. Last night, three ravens flew down the chimney, and you know what that means, don't you? No, I don't know what that means. Unless one of them has had me shoe. You're thinking of magpies. Well, perhaps it was three magpies flew down the chimney. I saw them. They were black as night. So would you be if you flew down the chimney. <laughs> Where the hell's that shoe? Oh, here it is. You should have a valet. You are Baron Hubert Fitzbovinder Outlook, and here we live in, in utter poverty in this damp, decrepit ruin of a castle, as if you were some complete non-entity. I hold a very important position here. I'm a warden of the Tower. The Tower? What Tower? The Tower of Cleethorpes. Anyone would think it was the Tower of London. No, that'd be too much responsibility. You can't even look after this place properly. I am the warden, not the landlord. I merely hold it in trust for the king. Well, I only hope for your sake he never sends anyone down here to look at it. Oh, of course he won't. Who the hell ever comes up here? Tell me, Sir Simon, is this all you do, escort prisoners to captivity? Why, no, Sir Gaston. In point of fact, I'm the new inspector of royal castles. Oh, I see. And what is the castle like where I am to be held prisoner? I don't know. I haven't inspected it yet. More honey, Sir Gaston. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, there is a wasp in it. Yes, I know there's a lot of them about. They get in everywhere. Oh! Oh, you are right. One has got inside my armor. Well, take it off. No, I can't. Why? Well, it might sting me. Where is it now? Look, it's, it is crawling around my left... Uh, what do you call it? Chest. Yes, chest. Wait! Why don't I put my hand down and grab it? No, no, no. Leave me alone. I'm wearing gloves. Yes, I, I know what you are wearing, but just leave me alone. Huh. What's it doing now? Well, it is, it is crawling down my back and going in. Ah! What's happened? I have squashed it. Did it sting you? No, not very much. Well, take your breeches off. I'll have a no, look. No, no, no. Just leave me alone and I'll, I'll be perfectly all right. Well, please yourself, Sir Gaston. But as it stopped raining, I think we should ride onto the castle. You ride. What about you? I think I prefer to walk. <laughs> what do you mean, I put you in a bad mood? I haven't said anything. Oh, no, nothing. Just apart from a few premonitions of disaster and ravens flying up your flu. Down the flu. Look, have your breakfast and go out hunting. How can I go out hunting with half the countryside underwater? All right, go out fishing. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's the matter with this milk? I expect it's turned. It's well known that stormy weather turns the milk. It doesn't turn it into bloody water, does it? <laughs> Ethelbert! Ethelbert! Where the hell is that serving man? Ethel! <laughs> you cold, madam? Yes, this milk seems watery. Oh, well, it's all this rotten rain we've been having. Everything's leaking. The cows aren't leaking, are they? Yeah, but well, the cow shed is. Why can't you keep the bucket under the cow? I do. But them poor bleating cows is so thin, the bucket's wider than what they are. <laughs> Get out. Oh, well, I do my best. I'm not the milkmaid, you know. I can't help feeling there's something peculiar about him. Oh, he is very peculiar. He's the only one around here who does any work. Oh, I don't know. What about Griselda? She always seems to be at it. Oh, she is. But I'm talking about housework. Good morning, Baron Hubert. Good morning, Lady Isabel. Ah, good morning, Friar Roger. <laughs> dear, oh, dear. 
You're up early? Up early? I haven't slept a wink all night. The rain's pouring through the roof in my bedchamber. I'm not surprised, pinching all the lead off it. Oh, no, just a few odds and ends, Baron, for my experiments. You are employed as castle physician and apothecary. You are not employed here to fiddle about with black magic. But Baron, alchemy is not black magic. I'm merely searching for a way to turn lead into gold. It's very respectable. Not the way you do it. Pinching all the lead and flogging it. Flogging it? Oh, Baron, every outer lead off that roof has gone into my crucible. Some very interesting experiments last night. Where's Griselda? Yes, sir. Uh, she's up in my bedchamber. I'm nearly there, you know. You won't. Hey. No, no, no. Oh, look, she's mopping the floor out. I told you the roof leaked like a sieve. Yeah, I see Sir William's not down yet. He is now. All right, I'm coming. All right. Come on. I just come down off them battlements. Yes, we heard you. I nearly broke me neck. Serves you right. Why do you have to wear this armor all the time? Why, where is it? Because I'm entitled to it. We know you're entitled to it, but do you have to wear it day and night? Uh, I come up the hard way. We just come down the hard way as well. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right, I knows I got enemies. I mean, after all, you can't rise from being a simple hunter to a fully harmed knight without making enemies. You got no enemies? Uh, well, who grease them bleeding stairs? Oh, look, do stop bickering. Why don't we sing a few bands? <laughs> I like music. So I hear. <laughs> shouting. I can't hear nothing. Must have imagined it. I loved a knight who was brave and bold, and he bought me a bracelet of shining gold. But when it ring, then its color changed, and now everyone's calling me green asleep. All together now. Green! But he found it was chewing a green sleeve. In the name of the king's business. After three. One, two, three. I think if you'll excuse me, I'll go and continue the experiments in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think we should go hunting. Uh, well, I can't go hunting. I ain't got no horse. Well, go and borrow one. Ah, it's ridiculous. Me, a fully armored knight, I ain't got no horse. <laughs> How can I keep the castle in good condition when he keeps slamming the doors? Well, I don't know why you put up. Because as warden of the tower, I'm entitled to a knight for defensive purposes. It says so in the regulations. Well, I don't believe he is a proper knight. He is the best we can afford. Well, I just hope nobody ever checks up on you, Hubert. I keep telling you, nobody will ever come up here. It's too far away. By the powers vested in me, I give warning. Anybody willfully obstructing the inspector of castles in the execution of his duty 
shall suffer death. Oh, the temptations of the flesh. There's two fellas outside. Who are they? I don't know, but one of them's playing the trumpet. Oh, Hubert, wandering musicians. Well, they can wander somewhere else. They're not coming in here. <laughs> Should I go up on the battlements and pour some boiling oil out? No, no, no. Don't use the oil. It's too expensive. Just use water. <laughs> can it be boiling water? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I do think you're mean. For a few coppers, we could have them in here to entertain us for weeks. I am not having wandering musicians in here. They're loose, immoral, and they harbor vermin. But Hubert... Don't argue. I'm not letting them in. Now, aren't you? You <laughs> you musical carrion. How did you get in there? I came in through the kitchen window. What about our defenses? How did you, how did you get across our moat? The moat is filled in at that point. That's you again, isn't it? How many times have I told you stop chucking the rubbish out of that kitchen window? Oh, blame me! Anyway, now he is in, we may as well hear him, mayn't we? Thank you. The message that I bring from our sovereign lord the king... Yeah, never mind the recitation, just blow your trumpet. How dare you, Baron? Have you any idea who I am? Don't you shout at me, I'll have that trumpet... I right am Sir your... Simon de Mont, <laughs> Inspector General of Royal Castle. And it could be very painful, you your... <laughs> Inspector General of Royal Castles! <laughs> Sir Simon, you, uh, you should have said. I didn't get much of a chance, did I? Oh, Charlie's in there. Yes, he is. Right, I'll get rid of him. Simon? No, thank you, Baron. A uh, care for a slice of swan? No, no, no. I know what he wants. What? Stuff it. <laughs> thank you, no, Lady Isabel. I think it's time I made my tour of inspection. Yes, well, I'm afraid you've come at a rather bad time. Yes, we've, uh, we've got the bonus in. Yes. You see, we're having the place completely renovated from top to bottom. Yeah. Good, because His Majesty is sending you a prisoner. He's a French knight taken captive in the recent wars. Now, you are to treat him with all courtesy and lodge and feed him according to his station. Yes. Well, he'll be all right. We'll shove him down in the dungeons. Oh, and they're awfully nice as dungeons go. He'll have nothing to complain of down there. Yes, sir. And even if he did, we wouldn't hear him up in. Well, it's up to you where you lodge and feed him, of course, but I must remind you, should anything happen to him whilst he's in your care, you are personally responsible for paying his ransom. What? Now, now, when is he arriving? Uh, oh, in about ten minutes. Oh. And I would consider that dungeons are a somewhat unsuitable place for a valuable French knight shortly to be ransomed. You're probably right. The problem is, where else to put it? To state your rooms in, Sir William. He'll be up any second to inspect it. What on earth have you been doing up here? And who made that hole in the floor? I did. But why? Well, so that I can pour boiling oil all over our enemies as they're approaching. Is that boiling oil? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh wait a minute. Hold on, watch it. But we're not at war, so why does it have to be boiling? Well, if it's not boiling, it makes all me chips go soggy. <laughs> this is the North Turret, occupied by Friar Roger. I'm afraid he dabbles in alchemy. Dabbles in alchemy? I think he's having a bit of a double right now. Open up, Friar. You can't come in, I've got something on the boil. Yes, we heard it. <laughs> hmm. You realize, as Inspector General, it is my duty to report all cases of black magic and immorality? Oh, well, there's none of that going on here. All I do is brew up a few simple remedies for the villagers, like this poor young maiden here. And who are you, my dear? I'm Rosie, the goose girl. And you've come to the right place. What? <laughs> is, 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 is anything wrong with the ill uh, remedy? Yes, indeed. In fact, I was just about to get it out when you entered. Oh, were you? She's, uh, she's got a nasty thorn in her foot, haven't you? Eh? Thorn. Oh, yes. Show the dear. Showing what? Showing what he was showing me. Oh. Just about. 
about here? Must have been a bloody long thorn if it went up that far. <laughs> She's only a simple village girl. Doesn't know her heel from her elbow. Well, what do you think, Sir Simon? What do you think mm. about one? It might be suitable. What might be suitable? Would you mind sharing it with a French gentleman? Oh, he certainly would. Let him find his own patience. <laughs> your bedchamber, you fool. Oh, well, that, well, all right, it's up to him, but let's look at that ceiling. Oh, look. Here we are. Here. Would you like a nice turnip fritter? Uh, no, thank you. Ah, oh, all right. <laughs> you come around here about midnight, my girl, and I'll give you a piece of hot rock salmon. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoys it. <laughs> oh, you are lovely, you are. <laughs> Hmm. Well, this looks better. Shall we put him up here, then? Put who up where? A French gentleman. What? I'm not sharing my quarters with no froggy. He's a knight, same as you are. Oh! <laughs> Fully <laughs> armoured? From head to foot. Yeah, he wears his all the time. Morning, noon and night. Right, I've never had it off. That I can believe. <laughs> now, concerning my report on the condition of the castle... Oh, yes. Don't you think we should discuss this in private? Oh, yes. Would you mind leaving us, Sir William? Of course. <laughs> you know, Baron, I am put to a great deal of expense in my travels around the country. Yes, well, you would be, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. I don't suppose one should bribe a high government official. But one could try. Yes. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Well, I suppose I could say the castle was in uh, fair condition. <laughs> of course, I could say it was in uh, reasonable condition. Not good, but reasonable. <laughs> yes, well, that's better. It appears your captive has arrived. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, about the castle. Oh, it's in excellent condition. First rate. Thank you. No holes anywhere. No holes anywhere. I am so sorry. We seem to have neglected you. Oh, that is all right, madame. Pray, how is the poor Sir Simon? Oh, fine. Friar Roger thinks he's broken a leg. I am sorry. <coughs> uh, I seem to have caught a chill. Could you show me to my chamber? Oh, certainly. You will be sharing with Sir Simon. <laughs> but, madame, must I? Oh, but it is our best bed chamber. My husband and I will have Sir William's room, and Sir William will share with Friar Roger. Oh, but I am sorry. I did not expect to share with Sir Simon. Well, we didn't expect him to break a leg. <laughs> Received in good condition one French knight. Well, sign it. Good. Now, if anything happens to him, it's your responsibility. What could possibly happen to him? How should I know? I've only been here a couple of hours, and look what's happened to me. You'll be all right. Ah! Oh! Oh! Here we are, Sir Gaston. It's a big bed. Plenty of room for you both. But, madame, I must insist on a bed to myself. Really, Sir Gaston, we're not made of beds. But if I am in there with him, he might get it. Get what? <coughs> My cold. I have a very bad cold. Well, I'll get Friar Roger to mix you a potion. <laughs> oh, but Sir Simon, he wouldn't want me in the bed with him. Oh, I don't mind. You'll be useful if I want something in the night. But what of your leg? Oh, you won't disturb me. Oh, no, but supposing you disturb me? Well, I don't see how he could, with it tied to the ceiling. <laughs> I have mute. Wing of bat. What the name of damnation's that? Here, fetch my bit of rock salmon. Well, where's my other ingredient then? The viper caught at midnight by a gallows. What? It must be here somewhere. Here, hold on, wait a minute. Look, here. That must be it. 
wants it doing to give it ah william i'll trouble you to keep your fried fish out of my push will you keep your perishing vipers out of my boiling oil god another minute i could have eaten you got that potion for the frenchman's cold hey eh? oh come down look at that man oh it's you yeah it's here yeah, take that one oh accept me that where was i uh, I know, it has. Here we are. A frog, a worm, a toad cross-eyed, and the gallows viper, that idiot fry. Oh, oh, oh. oh, this bed's hopeless. How long is that wretched captive going to be with us? He'll be ransomed soon. Oh. The potion. The potion. Did Griselda give it to him? Yes, why? Oh, dear. Well, I hope he hasn't drunk it. You see, it's my special potion. What special potion? Well, the one for changing lead into gold. Well, what will it change him into? I don't know. But it could be interesting. <laughs> oh, Sir Gaston, you'd better take that potion or neither of us will get any sleep. Oh, very well. Does it taste horrible? They usually are. No, it is quite nice. Huh? What's wrong? Oh, I do not know. I, I feel strange. I, I am sort of dizzy as if I were... <laughs> oh, it is very nice. Well, well, don't drink any more. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sir Gaston, you're ill. Get back into bed. Oh, oh I am so hot. Oh. <laughs> Fever? You have oh. come up in all sorts of things. <laughs> I feel you've undergone a curious change. <laughs> What's happened to him? Her? Them? Well, isn't it obvious? Lovely, lovely. Yes, you English, you have done this to me with your witchcraft. But what about the ransom? Yes. Look you know what you've done, you idiot. You've ruined us. I haven't done it much good either. You mean, you mean my question's turned Sir Gaston into a girl? Yes. Then I've found it. I've found it. Well, you know what you can do with it. Yes. Yes, look at me, all of you. For once I was known as Europe's greatest knight. If you play your cards right, mate, you still could be. Come here. Oh, 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 oh. Lord Burley, do you really think that England will go to war with Spain? For myself, I lay the blame entirely at the door of Lord Essex. Now, there are some who say that his apparent ardor for Her Majesty is, in truth, merely an insatiable lust for power. Now, what say you, Burley? You speak true, Raleigh. Where is Her Majesty? And now, that mellifluous morsel of monarchic merriment, that rombustious riot of red-headed radiance, that right royal raver, your own, your very own, Elizabeth I! <laughs> My loyal subjects, and I would just like to say, <laughs> and I would just like to say that, it... and I would just like to say, how... look here, when I play the Queen, don't trumpet. <laughs> Majesty, you look a perfect sight. One glimpse of such a wondrous vision is the only way to start the day. Oh, really, Raleigh? <laughs> what news, Burley? Your Majesty, I got a little epistle last night. I know, I carried him home. 
It was a message from Santa Cruz. Oh, come now. You don't believe in Santa Cruz at your age, do you? Here it is, Your Majesty. Oh, it's still warm. Steady, Bessie. Now, oh, what does it say? Dear Mrs. Queen, please pardon shaky handwriting as I'm in bed with the hiccups. The king is very angry with you, I think, and says if you sink any more of his ships, it will mean war. War? That's what I said. Well, I must close now, as the paella is boiling over, and there is a terrible smell from your devoted servant, Diego Wilkinson. Oh, Your Majesty, even though this may mean war, I want you to know that I shall remain ever loyal, and I shall serve you humbly. Oh, good. I haven't had any humbly for ages. But fear not, there will be no war. But, Your Majesty, how could you be so sure that there will be no war? Because I shall send for the one man who can save England from the threat of war. You, you mean? mean? Yes, Sir Francis Drake. The top, better into the wind. Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't let the men see that, Captain. They're desperate. What's the beef now? Don't mention food, Captain. Why? Right. Plenty for all, Mr. Todd. Here, have a few ship's biscuits. Oh, thank you, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> See, Captain, even the sharks are chucking those back. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I'm going. I'm going. Ah! Hey, chicken. Captain. Don't mention food. The men are mutiny. No, no, no. Mutiny's only Wednesdays and Saturdays. Ah. Be right there, you dogs. Get back. Back. Cat and nine tails, Mr. Todd. Aye, aye, cat. Not me, you fool. Them. Ah. Aye, aye, cat. Faster, faster. We've got to get to London with all speed to report to Her Majesty. Abaspia! I know she has, but she's still the queen. No, no, Spanish frigate for the port pole! Spanish what? Frigate! That's what I say! I can't stand it! I can't stand it! I'm going, I'm going! <laughs> this is the last time I come on one of these package cruises. Ah! Yeah. Give me the telescope, Mr. Todd. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> faster, faster. Bring her up to 30 knots. Men! Rally! Never mention that name. Men! Don't disgrace old England's land. Remember, England holds hands of beauty. Thank you, Richard Burton. You like that, Captain? That answer your question? I oh, can. Return their fire, Mr. Todd. Load the cannon and recite. The boys stood on the burning deck. The ship never allowed. Now, now, now recite. Oh, I, I can. Hello, Bess. Getting much? Oh, Sir Francis, remember your place. <laughs> we'll go back there later. Ah, uh, do you realize, sir, you are speaking to a queen? I can see that. Who are you? Gentlemen, please. This is Sir Walter Raleigh. This is Sir Francis Drake. Now shake hands. How do you do? I've heard of you, Wal. You brought back tobacco. Yes. Can I fill your pipe for you? Just you try it. <laughs> Let's have that pressy for Bessie. I scoured the world for a gift for you. I swore that when I returned, I would give you one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful girl. Yes, I got it off a little dressmaker in Barcelona. She was amazed. Why? She was wearing it at the time. Oh, <laughs> oh it's lovely. Yes, and that's not all I brought. What's this? The bill. I wouldn't pay it if I were you. Oh, Francis. Oh, I shall, I shall have it let out. Well, there's furnished flat. Uh. <laughs> Good old best. And now, Sir Francis, what of plunder? Are you going to show us your booty? What now? In, in front of the... Uh... Oh, booty. Oh, plunder. Yeah, what plunder. have you brought back? Nothing. 
nothing, but I sent you to Spain to rape and pillage. Well, one out of two isn't bad. I heard you sank the Spanish flagship, bearing 300,000 doubloons. What happened to that fortune? That's a good question. A very good question. Next question, please. That money was destined for the treasury. What will become of a nation's coffers? Well, don't look at me. He brought back tobacco. <laughs> what this means. How will England survive? How? How? Your Majesty, King Philip of Spain is without. Yes, I heard that too. <laughs> Wait a minute. King Philip of Spain? I wonder what he wants. He wants to marry you. And why not? After all, I am in the first flush of womanhood. If that's your first flush, there's something wrong with your plumbing. <laughs> Francis, I think my ship has come in. This is the perfect combination. You and the King of Spain. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't sound right somehow, does it? What? Elizabeth and Philip. <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, senors and senoritas, that iridescent, indefatigable Iberian imperialist, that power-hungry, peripatetic, pristine, pulsating potentate, Mr. Madrid himself, their own, their very own, King Philip of Spain. Holy! Don't creep up on me like that. Conquistador, nada de sombrero. At the end of Madrid, the hombre payaro, Ibiza. Ah, Palieres, Palma di Mallorca, besame mucho amor de Pancho. Lovely. What does it mean? Good morning. Oh, do you speak Spanish? Si, si. We know you are, but do you speak Spanish? If you weren't a man, I'd hate you. Ask him what brings him here. Signore, casa mia per tua sole. Ah, el pasión. For la signora real grande. Oh, mi amor, Elisabetta. Ah, por favor, mucho calor. Slapo di ticlo de rampo. Conquistador di Sierra Navarra. Oh, well, Your Majesty, he says he has the most enormous potential. <laughs> Mio Bessi. Ah, matador, corrida, il toro, navegación. Ah, he says he's incredibly rich because he exports fighting bulls all over the known world. That's true. He's the biggest bullshipper in Europe. <laughs> How dare you, you English pig! Oh, you speak English? Si, I am bilingual. Oh, I knew there was something about him I liked. <laughs> It's lovely to see you, Philip. Tell me, how long have you been king now? Oh, well, now, let me see. My reign in Spain falls mainly on the plain. By George, she's got it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, do continue. <laughs> well, my dear, I am a man. You are a woman. Oh, what a shame. We've got nothing in common. Never mind. Go on. Well, our two countries should be one. And the best way of achieving this is for us to be one, too. Do you wish to be one? Well... He wasn't talking to you. Now let us face it, my dear. I want to marry you, you want to marry me. If we marry each other, we can do it with one wedding. Let us get married without a do. Oh, we've got to have a do. You can afford it. <sighs> Please say yes. Tis the most meat I should marry. And this is the most meat anybody can marry. <laughs> yes. Then... The pact is sealed. Oh, my hand on it. Oh! <laughs> oh my darling. My little English muffin. Oh, pardon the garlic. But you turn my knees to water, my heart to jelly, my brain to putty. Oh, it sounds very messy. El campo. Oh, poof. Well, my shining light. My morning star, I must return to Spain. There is a fast packet waiting for me at Tilbury. Anybody I know? <laughs> <laughs> I shall return for the wedding ceremony. Till we meet again. Hoi, 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 Toro. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, Francis, have I done wrong? Can't you remember? No, I mean, have I made a wrong decision with this marriage? Of course not. I've got cold feet. How could I forget? You'll be all right. He's the richest and most generous king in Europe. He'll give you everything. Yes, but he's rather old. Well, nearly everything. <laughs> but nothing to worry about. I'll look after you. Oh, Francis, you scintillate. I sin after right as well. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> oh, that a statically ebullient, egregarious. Oh, shut up. <clears throat> My Lord Essex. <laughs> There's a pretty picture. Virgin on the ridiculous. You should talk all teeth and tights. What is all this? Confound it, madam. Explain yourself. How dare you take that tone with me? Remember, I am a sovereign. Oh, the price has gone up again. Bow your head or I shall have it off. That wouldn't surprise me. I have returned in victory from the Low Countries. You swore that if my efforts were crowned with success, you would be mine. Yes, but everything's changed. What do you mean? I am the new Lord Chamberlain. Sir Francis Drake, new Lord Chamberlain and Queen's favourite, so get your hands off. DBTC. What does that mean? Don't bend the card. Thank you. I have some bad news for you, Corporal. Corporal? Hi, <laughs> sir, and the Lord Lieutenant. That's the bad news. You can't talk like that to me. I shall not endure this humiliation. Oh, yes, you will, or you shall go to the bloody tower. Or the flaming block. Go for a ride, Your Majesty. Call me Batch. Where shall we go? Your gaff by the river. Hampton Court? No, I always walk like this. Uh... Oh, hello, soldier. What's the matter? Ah, uh, Rally. It is a black day indeed. All my plans have gone poof. Oh, sorry, nothing personal. Oh, that's all right. What's the matter then? It is that scoundrel Drake. He has the Queen's ear. And I think he's going for the set. I must find a way of circumventing his machinations. Oh, really? I have it. <laughs> all the time, so I've heard. Eureka! Ah, that's my new cologne. Do you like it? It's very butch. It comes in a hairy bottle. I have found a scheme of discrediting Drake. You are familiar with the fetching comely Miranda Letcher? Oh, well, yes, in a manner of speaking. She's a lady in waiting. Yes, and never for long, I hear. They say she has welcome inscribed on her chamber. <laughs> oh, now there's a busybody. <laughs> she will do anything for me. I shall persuade her to lure Drake to her apartments and thus compromise him. At that moment, I shall bring in the Queen to discover them. What do you think of my stratagem? Oh, well, I'll tell you when I've seen it. And remember, not a word of my plans to anyone. Do I have your word? Guide's honor. Not a word of this to Bessie. By the way, where is the Queen? Well, Her Majesty's on the throne. Ah, well, I'll wait till she's finished. <laughs> Sir Francis. Thank you. Snap. <laughs> You're Drake, aren't you? That's right. Well, quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be needing these now. It is my Lady Letchworth, as I live and breathe heavily. Oh, how do you know me? I saw your picture in the Sunday parchments. Me and my husband? Yes. A lovely couple. Oh, Sir Francis, would you like to come back to my apartment? You, a knight, a lord, an admiral, a scholar, and a gentleman. How many of us are going to be there? Oh, just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you promised to be good. Good? I'll be bloody marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. That was delicious. <laughs> oh, you like it, do you? Like it? I love it. <laughs> Come on, get lucky. Oh, I must delay him until the Queen and Riley arrive. Who were you speaking to? Oh, no one, my love. Oh, soon we shall engage in amorous stallions. But first I shall regale thee with my virginals. You have some left? <laughs> <laughs> 
Blimey, it is true. <laughs> Quiet. It has come to my notice that Sir Francis Drake is not in our midst. Has anyone here news of his whereabouts? Well, Your Majesty, you know me. I'm not one to talk. I won't say anything about anybody unless I can say something good. And this is good. Yes. Out with it. Pardon? Oh, I see what you mean. Well, Drake is in his hammock, not a thousand miles away, with a certain lady of the court. I'll give you a clue. M.L. Miranda Letworth. Oh, no, I can't believe it. What has become of honor? What has become of ethics? Oh, here he is now. All hail, ruler of the sun. May you forever reign. What is this, a greeting or a weather forecast? You're so beautiful when you're angry. Well, I'm sorry to be touching with you, Robert, but I've just heard that Sir Francis Drake is being unfaithful to me. <laughs> have a lovely touch. Oh, and I'm sure you have too, my love. Let me show you. <laughs> Where can they be? I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing, my love. Uh, did you enjoy that? Yes. Yeah. Did you notice the arpeggio at the end of the first passage? Yes, thank you, but I've been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just reading this fascinating book by dear Sir Francis Bacon upon the meaning of life. I can show you that. <laughs> um, do you believe in the hereafter? I believe in what I'm hereafter. Come here. Oh, soon, soon. But first, shall we play a game of cards? Cards? Yes, but I warn you, I play a Shocking game. Good, let's play that instead. <laughs> oh, naughty. Oh, what are they doing? Come on, man, hurry up. We've got to get to Drake. Oh, I'm sorry, but this girdle's killing me. Don't you realize that time is precious? Well, aren't we all? You speak for yourself. Now, come on. Oh, oh I win this time. Now you take something off. <laughs> you deal. No, no, no. This is taking too long. Oh. Pick a card. What is it? Ace of clubs. You lose. Take off the lock. Oh, not this <laughs> He thinks I hear footsteps approaching, and now the game begins. Oh, Sir Francis, I'm yours. Take me over, Francis. Stop playing so hard to get. <laughs> Oh, my God, she's going to swim. Oh, 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 Your Majesty, I am undone. Chance would be a fine thing. Oh, Francis, you have betrayed me, and for this you shall be penalised. Oh, no, not that. You wouldn't. Well, chaps, we must be going. <laughs> what do you think of my plan? Oh, nice one, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> you fancy a quick meet? Certainly. Your place? Yes. Where is it? Mincing Lane? Oh, you are saucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Francis, how could you? I couldn't help myself. But you were helping yourself. I saw when I came in. How <laughs> bad. You're the only woman for me. Am I really? Yes, of course you are. I knew that the minute I first saw you in front of the palace. Mind you, I couldn't see the palace. Uh... <laughs> Francis, you certainly know how to get round women. And they don't come any rounder than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. Let's have a cuddle. Oh, that aftershave lotion drives me mad. Then why do you wear it? Oh, Francis! <laughs> well, my dear, I've made all the preparations for our wedding and... Caramba! What? You, him, him, you, both of you together. You, half clothed in a compromising situation with my fiance. There must be an explanation. Let's have it then. You, yes, I can explain. No, no explanations. I am breaking it off. Oh. And furthermore, as of around this moment, our two countries are at war. War? and is now winning by a pair of bowls. In Abdi... Oh. <clears throat> the Spanish Armada has been sighted off the Isle of Wight. Over now to our naval correspondent, Mr. MacDonald Quaker. <laughs> the battle is reaching its peak, and I can just see the Spanish flagship. I'm afraid I can't pronounce its name, but I can spell it for you. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. Those are the portholes. <laughs> a 
with it just as she bent down. I... Do it, I'll pray! Uh, meanwhile, Her Majesty the Queen is actively engaged in measures to counteract the impending invasion by the Spaniards. Over now to the palace. Oh, tell me, Your Majesty, what is the latest news? Oh, not good, I'm afraid. Not good. Crumpet? Oh, that'll be the day. You were saying? Well, the Spanish fleet is heaving too. I think it's all that rich food they have. <laughs> well, here's the latest bulletin. Oh, good heavens! The Spanish feet are encircling the Hebrides. The Hebrides. Your Majesty, I come hot from Plymouth. I have news of the Navy. Well, if you're going to start naming names... It's me. Oh, good news! The whole Spanish fleet has turned the other way. Oh, well, you know what sailors are. <laughs> You made the Spanish vanish. And now it's upstairs for an orgy and best. Oh, not so fast. I'll take me time. No, first I must lay on a feast. Oh, kinky queen. Let the bells ring out. Let there be bunting and frolics. Try saying that after a couple of drinks. <laughs> This is Europe, the year 1066. On the coast of France, a mighty fleet assembles under the command of William, Duke of Normandy, impatient to don the English crown. Jolly good show, this bar. In Saxon England, the Saxon king Harold is thoughtfully playing his Saxon phone. What a frightening talent. Sire, sire, it's for you. Oh, gracious majesty, king of all the Saxons, prince of all the Anglos, lord of all the Martys... And queen of all the fairies, yes, yes. I know who I am, so what's the message? The Norwegians are threatening the north. We march north! The Normans are threatening the south. We march south! But the Norwegians have landed on the Yorkshire coast. We march! That way. Egbert. Oh, hello. Any news of the you-know-what? What? The you know what? No, I don't. The secret weapon unit. I have ordered the greatest brains in the land to invent me a secret weapon that will save England from the invader. Oh. And why'd you call it a you know what? To keep it a secret. Bonjour, mon duc. I bring news from England. Speak. The English will soon have a you know what. <laughs> name of a name, the cunning dogs. They must be stopped too sweet. And the tutor, the sweeter. This is a job for a best secret agent. You mean... You know who? Can I help you? Yes, I am Sergeant Ethelred of Ha, of the King's Own Aching Foot. Oh, pleased to meet you. I'm Brother Ethelstan. I work here. Ah, well, listen, Brother Ethelstone. I am here on direct orders of King Harold on a mission of the utmost hush. Of course. You've come for the secret weapon, haven't you? That's right, yes. <laughs> Nobody's supposed to know about that. Oh, don't worry. I know how to keep a secret. <laughs> hey, you two. Would you go in and fetch the King's weapon? Uh, thank you. You're very lucky. We've only just finished it. Oh? 
Hey, was that the bang we heard when we just got here? Oh, no. No, 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 not at all. That was my own experiment, you see. <laughs> That's going to make me famous one day, that is. Go away. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's for scaring birds off growing crops, you oh. see. Yes. I'm thinking of calling it bird powder. Bird powder? <laughs> <laughs> ah. The king's new secret weapon, guaranteed to save England from disaster. What, that dirty old iron chest? Oh, dear. The secret weapon's inside, you see. We've had it gift-wrapped. <laughs> well, I can't stand around here chatting all day. Hey, just a minute. Hang on. This secret weapon, what is it? I can't tell you that. It's a secret. Oh. Well, then you'd better come along with us and explain it to the king. No, you don't understand. I'm indispensable here. There's my own experiment, you see. <laughs> yes. And besides, the abbot would never let me go. Oh. Get out, go on, get out. Go. <laughs> this is your lucky day. <laughs> the abbot has finally persuaded me to travel with you. <laughs> Where is the king? He marched north. North? With God's help, I shall guide you safely to him. The key of the secret weapon. Oh. Ooh, must be careful of this. I'll say. <laughs> Oi! North is that way. <laughs> you hanging back for? Come on. Oh, Sergeant, please, I'm just picking a few herbs. This is a military expedition, not a bloody nature ramble. Oh, these are very good for the blood. Very interesting, I'm sure. But my problem is to keep going. Ah, well, uh, take two of these before and after meals. <laughs> sort of going, you monkish nut. Look, if you want to do something useful, find us something to eat. Well, I've got the very thing here, look. Do you realise, Sergeant, there's enough energy in one of these leaves to keep a fully grown man marching for 40 miles? Well, I'll have a bash at that, yeah, then. Just a moment, please. It's necessary you for mean? you to have the... What are you uh, doing? the condiments. Where are they? Here they are. You mean condiments? There. That's it. Oh. You'll find that very nutritious. Thank God. Mm. That's special, uh, Bunny. Oh, my God. So... 
what happened? I don't know. I went dead from the neck up. Yeah. Well, Rim, once we've mastered that little problem, I think we're on a winner there. You'll have to do better than that. Now, come on! All right, Sergeant. Oh, I'm just trying to find my sack. I walked through here. I... Oh! <laughs> oh, dear. I am going to lose my temp... We, we, we. Oh, hey, that's different. Good lad. How did you get that? Sergeant, please, it had nothing to do with... Don't be so modest. Honestly, Sergeant, you don't seem to understand. Come on, come on. No, come here. Come on. 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 Come if you had an arrow up your throat, you wouldn't find much to laugh at. How did the arrow get up its throat in the first place, particularly since it's a French arrow? What makes you think it's a French arrow? Oh, I don't know, Sergeant. It's this funny feeling I've got. Unless, of course, it's the feathers or the design or where it says made in Normandy. Let me see that. You're right. It is a French arrow. So how did a French arrow Get up an English rabbit's throat in an English forest. Well, uh, well, what's your theory, then? Well, I think there's a naughty Norman lurking around here, waiting to pick us all off. Why don't you leave the thinking for them that's equipped for it? Now, get on with the cooking. Yes, you're probably very right, Sergeant. Coming on very well. There we are. Yes, well, never mind the spices. If it's ready, we'll eat it. Look, Sergeant, please, just give me a couple of minutes. I'm very good at this sort of thing. <laughs> See? <laughs> that's wonderful, isn't it, eh? <laughs> and that's only for starters. <laughs> that's well marvellous. Right, let's go. Just at a it. moment, Sergeant, please, look. Just one more little sprinkle, and that rabbit will be out of this world. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> You and your bloody bird powder. Thank you, Sergeant. What? <coughs> Made in Normandy. <laughs> From England. Speak. The English, you know what, is on its way to Harold. And our secret agent, you know who? Gone. Who knows where? <gasps> name of another name. This calls for sterner measures. There's only one other person we can send. You mean? You know who else? You see, we are here. Stamford Bridge is there, so it's uh, just round the next corner. You've been saying that ever since we passed Coventry. Yes, well, you can't be right every time. Now, come on. Listen, listen. I can't hear anything. There, there, there it is again. Yes, it sounds like somebody in trouble. Uh, excuse me. Hello, chicky. <laughs> the naughty Normans or their saucy Saxons. Madam, please. We are Saxons. Oh, still never mind to the victor, the spoils. Come on, who's first? Could hmm? no. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you? <coughs> Could you tell us where the battle is? Battle, the battle's over. Now we can get on with the atrocities. Come on. <laughs> Oh, the battle's over. Who won? Aye. Oh, King Harold, you see? That's right, it was King Harold. Pity, really. Them Vikings to a smashing pillage. Oh, great big blonde hairy sweaty things. Oh, 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 oh. No, oh, please, oh, my oh, God, oh, no. Oh, 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 oh
Please tell us where is King Harold now? Oh, we rotten old sport of sport. The battle was hardly over before he had all his men fall in and he, he marched them off to Hastings. Hastings? That's way down south. What the hell did he go down there for? Well, the French had landed. Well, you set out immediately. Tough shouldn't bother. Them Frenchies, they couldn't pillage their way out of a paper bag. Oh, <laughs> take them lads of yours there. Come on, I'll bet they're devils for their round. Madam, they are English. They are not used to that sort of thing. Oh, they fancy a bit of practice. Never mind that. We march south. Well, what about you, then? <laughs> Sorry, Aunt huh, Nelly. You'll have to wait till next season. Right, come on, you two. Quick as you like. I'll tell you what you can do. You can go straight back to King Adel's camp. Well, don't just stand there. Put the chest down. Oh, 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 oh. Get out of it! Ha! Well, it's a very high-class sort of place, isn't it? Hello! Oh, how do you do? Are you the landlord? <laughs> Are you blind? I'm the landlord's daughter, Isolde. Well, now, Isolde, may we have two stoops of your finest ale? <laughs> How about a firkin? You've got your language! <laughs> a bit of all right, that one, eh? <laughs> I do not know much about that sort of thing. It does not arise in the monastery. No, I'm sure it doesn't. <laughs> Oh, thank you, darling. That'll do all right for starters. <laughs> Let's see your money. Uh, oh, that's all right. You just charge this to King Harold. <laughs> That'll be a quarter of a groat. Oh, I'm sorry. I have nothing less than a penny. <laughs> <laughs> I can change it. Yes, well, give us the change and then I'll send you the penny when I get back to camp. <laughs> no man, no fat. <laughs> Allow me. Will that cover everything? Oh, yes. <laughs> Could uncover quite a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what you do. We'll have a, a saddle of mutton, Ooh, a two roast capon, some stewed carp, and I'll order the main course later. Anything you say, sir. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I'd better have a dozen oysters as well. I'll tell you what, we'll make that two dozen. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can pop something in the oven. <laughs> Sergeant, no, wait. I'm very sorry about that. He's a very impatient sort of fellow. I do not like the rough soldier. I much prefer the gentle monk. <laughs> <laughs> you are uh, very religious, then, milady. Hmm? <laughs> Madame. <laughs> Mrs. My name is unimportant. Ah, well, Mrs. Unimportant. <laughs> but you can call me else. Okay. <laughs> you naughty boy. You want to dance? Oh, no, please. No, look, madam, please. We shall take steps to get better acquainted. We must have music. <laughs> Tell me all about yourself. Oh, well, there's nothing much to tell. 
Perhaps I know quite a lot about you already. <laughs> no, I don't see how that can be possible. Are you going to show me your... you know what? <laughs> you want to see my you know what? Couldn't possibly do that. Oh. It's a secret. Oh, come on, you can tell me. Where is it? <gasps> I mustn't say. Let me guess. Is this it? <laughs> That's a family heirloom. No, please, don't pull it, madam. I'm very attached to it. Ah, uh, I, I bet that is it. Oh, no. That's just full of old books. Oh, look, I'm not really interested in your silly old, you know what? Let's have a drink, eh? <laughs> <laughs> To us. To us. Do you really want to see my you know what? Well, I wouldn't want to get you into trouble. No. We can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> that is our latest secret, you know what, you see? That is, is an invisible ointment. Magic that makes you invisible. Sacre bleu! I mean, uh, a sacred blue. <laughs> no, madam, please. It can only be opened in pitch darkness by the light of a single candle. But this is fantastic. Mm, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this stuff must never be allowed to fall into enemy hands. I will drink to that. <laughs> 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 Oh, there's plenty of food out there in the kitchen. If you, if you like to, um, where, where's the lady? <laughs> that was no lady. That was a Norman spy trying to get her hand on my you-know-what. She got it? <laughs> she thinks she did. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, she should be back in France by now. One of these days, that bloody bird powder of yours is going to be a menace. <laughs> Here, if you need anything, my rooms are first at the top of the stairs. <laughs> oh, I'll be coming up your way in a minute. <laughs> Good help. Oh, no, son. She, she did. She did. Oh, no. Come on, the section! Move it apart a bit. Keep up in the centre. Now, out to the wings. That's it. Get stuck in there, lads. How do you think we're doing? Well, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? Yes, we've got them by the short and curlies. Oh, we should be so lucky. I think you're pushing forward too much. Your midfield is extended and your back line is too square. Are you trying to tell me my job? Oh, no, perish the thought. I mean, you're the king. Our whole future is in your capable hands. Yes, well, that's all right, then. Look after the shopping, but I'm going to nip down the hill for a quick slash. <laughs> oh, Sergeant, his chest is heavy. Oh, don't complain all the time. What kept you? Is this it? Is this the secret weapon? Yes, sire. Well, don't just stand there, get it out of the box. Y yes, sire, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, no. Oh, no, the key's lost it away. Oh, well, never mind. It's not locked anyway. <laughs> Come on, just a moment. You've got to be very careful with it. Oh. There. Right. Look at that. You got it. <laughs> Sire. What is that supposed to do? Well, Sire, uh, Sergeant, please. Sir? It fits over the head, Sire. So, you see? Um, there. Pardon, sir? <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me, sir. One second. Yes, sir. I, I, I think he's asking what happens next. How do you know that? Well, it's what I'd be asking. Oh, well, uh, let's read the instructions, shall we? Right. Yeah. yeah. 
car. Yes. Oh, hot my key. The uh, St. Augustine see-through battle helmet patent applied for. Uh, well, that's not much of a secret weapon. It's just a bloody helmet. Ah, yes, you see, there is this ancient prophecy that King Harold will die by an arrow in the eye. Get off. I didn't know that. Well, we did, you see. And this helmet is absolutely guaranteed to stop arrows going into people's eyes. Yes. Here we are. Instructions for fitting. We've done all that. See important footnote. Ah, yes, here we are. Before fitting the helmet, make sure that the air vent is in the open position or the wearer will suffocate. Oh, yeah. oh we did all that. Oh, I'm sure we did. Didn't we? I think so. Yeah. The king, is he? Just a moment. Yes. What do we do now? There's only one thing we can do. Bung an arrow in his eye and let Scarpa. <laughs> Yourselves up a bit, you'll be here in a minute. Oh, well, please yourselves. <laughs> if that's the flower of English knighthood, I'd hate to see the weeds. What say? Pray silence for our sovereign lord, King Arthur, and his queen, the Lady Guinevere. <laughs> Stood on the cat. I'm sorry, sire. It's a new bugler. Well, tell him to bugle off. Come on, sailor. Well, <laughs> pretty fair-looking bunch, eh? Well, it's hard to judge the contents by the label on the tin. <laughs> I reckon there's bound to be a few good knights among that lot. Well, keep one for me, will you? Ready whenever you are, sire. All right. Yes, we'll get the lads around the table. Come on, lads. <clears throat> Would you care to hang on here? I'll go back to bed. There won't be much doing here. There won't be much doing there, either. <laughs> Gentlemen, be seated. <laughs> Gentlemen, I bid you welcome all to this first meeting of our goodly company of knights perfect and true, the cream of my kingdom's fighting men. Pledge to the principles of honor above all, self-sacrifice, and a total allegiance to your sovereign. Aye, aye. He's going to put up the taxes again. <laughs> now, the first thing we have to do is to find a name for our society. What about King Arthur and his all-steel band? Uh, rubbish. <laughs> yeah. well, no, 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 no. I was thinking more along the lines of uh, Arthur and his unforgettable knights. Why are your knights so unforgettable? I've forgotten why. He's forgotten how. <laughs> then how about Arthur? and the Knights of the Round Table. No, makes us sound like some sort of charity. Ah, yeah. uh, yeah, well, it'll have to do until we think of something better. And now, gentlemen, if there is no further business, I think we can... Hello? What's that? Oh, it's probably old Merlin playing with his coconuts again. <laughs> Silly old man. He can hardly see as it is. <laughs> well, hold on. That's a horse. I think you're right. I'd better go. Yeah, hold on. Yes. Oh, yes, that's a horse, all right. Entirely different sort of noise altogether, you know. Yes, well, if oh, you yeah. excuse you me. You see, I'll... coconuts go sort of clickety, lickety, lickety, like that, you see. Whereas a war horse goes more pa jingle ti jingle ti jingle ti jingle ti jingle ti jingle Well, if you'll excuse me, sir. Oh, there was a time, you know, not long ago, when I could tell the actual size of a horse. Yes. By the sort of noise it made. Yes, sir, but I must oh, go. Yeah. And... Now, listen. That's a bigger. Yes, I'm sure it is, but I must well, go. And... That's a war horse, yes. definitely. <laughs> Sire, if you will excuse me. Yes, that's a Wessex supercharger latest model. I'm <laughs> sure you're right, Sire, but if you'll excuse me, I must go and... Lower the drawbridge. <laughs> Your Majesty! <laughs> Forgive my tardiness. Well, I don't know. 
We don't go in for late nights in Camelot. <laughs> Still, now that you're here, I One moment, go... sir. <laughs> my journey has been long, my arrival somewhat abrupt. I crave your indulgence while I restore my peace of mind. Well, what do you say? What's he talking? Shouldn't be long. Sorry. Sire. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's better. Now, where do I sit? Well, uh, hadn't you better get out of those wet things before you go rusty? No, sir. I took a solemn vow that I would not remove this armor until I had become the greatest knight in all the land. I haven't had it off for seven years. I know exactly how he feels. <laughs> And now I am here to dedicate my life, my heart, my soul oh! to the ultimate triumph of good over evil. Good lad. Well, bung his name down. Yes. <laughs> name, rank and designation. I am Sir Pure Heart, the irreproachable knight. Sir Pure Heart, the unapproachable. No, no, no. I am irreproachable. Oh, after seven years in that armour, you're unapproachable. <laughs> Greetings, my fellow knights. Greetings, I greet you. Greetings to all my fellow knights of the... Hi! Do you mind? Sorry. You stinking great nit! No, no, not nit. I'm a knight. K-N-I-G-H-T spells knight. And why are you spells you? You stinking great nit! <laughs> Sir. Oh, Let's do something about Before the drain. The drains are metal. Oh, lovely ox. Right, gentlemen. Next business. Standing orders. Oh, 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 oh just a moment. Oh, One at a time. No, who wants a gallon of ale? I... Who wants a jug of mead? Please, please. Very well, anyone fancy a firkin? Of ale, please, sir. Anything else? <laughs> I don't think we've got any vaunt in the cellar, but I'll go and have a look. Cease, desist, woa, and stop. I took a solemn vow that no strong drink would pass my lips until I had become the greatest knight in all the land. I haven't had any for seven years. Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> Gentlemen, take the pledge with me. It is a well-known fact that strong drink can seriously curtail one's knightly prowess. So can a suit of armour. <laughs> Sir, I drink ten gallons of ale a day, and it has never yet interfered with my <laughs> prowess. Your name, sirrah? Cirrhosis of the liver. I might have guessed. Sir, down my gauntlet. <laughs> Up your gauntlet. <laughs> right, sir. That does it! Outside! Charlie! Oh, 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 Just a minute! Listen! Take the brain night, sir! Oh, that night! We'll have it say us! We'll all be massacred in our beds! Well, it's better than nothing! Oh, no! We'd better go and see what he wants! I am Sir Ali. The Big Black Knight. I challenge you all to come out and fight! Go away! There's nobody at home! I am going to <laughs> till I've whooped every knight in the castle. Why? Because I am the greatest. <laughs> I am the fastest. And I am... Oh, what a bet. <laughs> what are we going to do? Why don't we cover our eyes up and pretend he's not there? Yes. <laughs> Just let him rave on. Hmm? Yes, ignore After him. After all, he can't cause much trouble out there, can he? Yeah. Ignore him, <laughs> sir. He'll go yeah, away. Right. Yes, he'll go. King Arthur is a rotten coward. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we all know that isn't true. <laughs> King Arthur drinks his bath water. <laughs> Childish. I never have a bath. King Arthur wears parchment knickers! <laughs> yeah! Ooh, I didn't know that. Neither did I. It's a lie, I tell you. 
A filthy lie! Sir, sir, let no, me prove it is a lie! Watch out, no peeking. No, sir, I meant let me accept the Black Knight's challenge. Oh, no, lad. He'd kill you. Looks like another wasted night. No, sir. You a see, fool. I wish to prove... I wish to prove to these knights of yours that chastity, temperance and virtue will always overcome evil and depravity. Looks like a lot of wasted nights. If the Black Knight defeats me, then you may return to your revels. But if I defeat the Black Knight, then you must all take a vow of chastity, temperance and virtue. Let him go! Let him fight! Let him fight! No, no, no. I cannot let him go. It would not be fair. King Arthur's got corns on his top! <laughs> right, that does it. You're on, lad. Sir! <laughs> <laughs> for chastity! Thank you very much. Your Majesty, I pray <laughs> indulgence just for one word. For temperance! Oh, yeah. Your Majesty, yeah. lend me the ear, Your Majesty. Please. For virtue! <laughs> oh, he's gone. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, just a moment. Um, one gallon of ale, two jugs of mead. <laughs> oh, and who was it fancy to firkin? Ho oh, there, base miscreant knight. What's joust? Once take just. Right, toss for ends. You call. <coughs> Heads and tails. Ah, <laughs> best of three. I'll take the pavilion end. Now, just a minute, where's your horse? Ah, well, it's such a lovely day that I decided to do it on foot. <laughs> <laughs> See about that. Now, what do you think? How about the Wonder Boy Scout sword with a special blade for getting knights out of horses' saddles? No, no, too messy. Mm. Ah, there's Morning Star. Oh, dear me, you haven't cleaned it. Look at all that rust. If I hit him with that, he could turn septic. Ah. What about a two-arm? Ah, yes. <laughs> Now, if I could sink the offside hoof, I could have him down in one. Oh, no. I think I'd better stick to the number four arm. Off you go, Squire. Present and correct. <clears throat> Hello. Who's missing? Nobody, you great smelly nut! No, no, not nut. I'm a knight. You're a nut! Clear your mind of all impure thoughts, my little brother. We are about to spend the long, dark hours in fasting and silent meditation. Right. Eyes down for an all-night vigil. Where's King Arthur? Oh, he sends his apologies. He's detained in the throne room. <laughs> What do you want? I want to come in. Can't you read? By appointment to the king. But I am the king. Well, you'll have to make an appointment. <laughs> yes? I wish to make an appointment. Oh, when for? Can you see me now? Quite clearly. No. I mean, can you see me inside? No, you're not in here. Well, I know I'm not in there. I want to come in. Well, you can't come in. Can't let you in unless you say the secret password. Wait, the secret password? You said that very nicely. Come in. 
Now then, what seems to be your problem? <laughs> well, Merlin, my nights are very restless. Ah, well, slip behind the screen and take your clothes off. <laughs> what for? I haven't had a good laugh for weeks. <laughs> Come in, it's not locked. Oh, good evening, my lady. Won't be a moment. Just slip behind the screen and take your clothes off. right -o. No, Hang on, hang on. He's just told me to do that. Great, I haven't had a good laugh for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, less of this now. We have important matters of state to discuss. Now, Merlin, I'm very worried about Sir Pureheart. He's ruining my nights. He's not doing much for mine, either. <laughs> Sir Pureheart, oh, yes. It's indeed the chap that's got the theory that giving up the pleasures of the flesh greatly increases a man's strength and stamina. Yes, that's it. Do you think that there's uh, anything in it? Well, if there was, you'd be world champion. <laughs> the whole point is that Sir Pureheart thinks there's something in it, so for him there is. In other words, there's nothing we can do. I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> then there's something we can do. I didn't say that either. Well, you'll have to be very quiet for a moment or two, cos I'm going to ponder. How about if we dropped a love potion into his hot milk and then confined him somewhere with a warm-blooded woman? <laughs> I'm at Ponder's end. Yes, <laughs> Supposing I give him one of my special blood boilers and we fix him up with a nice young dolly bird. Uh, a mature woman of taste. Mm, that's not bad. Do you think it'll work? We'll soon find out. Got the very instrument here. Well, it was here yesterday. I'll find a thing in this place. The woman hasn't been in for three weeks. Let's see what we've got here. Hmm? Here it is. Ah. <laughs> now, we have a little peer into the future. Very quiet, I've lost my hands. Oh, no, there they are. <laughs> Inkum, dinkum, blinkum, sinkum. Switchy on and start to winkum. Hang on a minute, hang on. These old balls take a little while to warm up. You can say that again. <laughs> Some hmm? Look at them. Huh? Well, I can't see any picture. Well, neither can I. I can. Look, I can see a cave. There's... Here, someone approaches. It's a woman. Look! Oh, she is scantily glad, isn't she? In, in the sheerest gossamer. Here, do you see that? Huh? Her gown got caught on a thorn bush and pulled right down to her ankles. Oh! 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 oh. oh she's pulled it up again. Well, who is she? Oh, I wasn't looking at her face. No approaches. It's... it's a pure art. He whips out his weapon and waves it over his head. What? <laughs> Please, please, my lady, don't blow on it. It's the only one I've got. <laughs> Shh, quiet. Yeah. Sir Pureheart's gone into the cave. Huh? Something happening in there. Well, can you sort of get in closer, see what's going on? I'd rather see what's coming off. <laughs> Time passes. Tis dawn. Oh, there's a movement inside the cave there. Sir Pureheart emerges. Uh, what does he look like? Broken. Do you think he can be fixed? It's going to work. It's going to work! It is, of course it is. <laughs> I'll go and mix up a love potion. Uh, Here, what about the woman? Ah, the woman. Yes. Ah, who can we get? Well, obviously you need a woman of, of stature and presence. Someone that knows what it's all about. My memory is excellent. <laughs> She'll have to be dead keen. No sacrifice is too great when my country's at stake. What we want is a right little raver. She doesn't have to be all that little. Wait! I know the very woman. You don't mean the... Yes. <laughs> the Lady Ermintrude. The Lady Ermintrude? Squirmy Ermy. <laughs> oh, yes. I wonder where she is. Funny you should say that. Lady Ermintrude, put your clothes on, dear, and come out from behind the screen. <laughs> Magic. Huh? What on earth are you doing in there like that? I don't know. I only came in to borrow a book. <laughs> oh, we don't wish to know about that. Now, listen, you've heard the plot. Do you think that you can handle Sir Pure Heart right? Right or left? I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> well, is there anything I can do to help? Oh, uh, yes, there is, as a matter of fact, but I hesitated to ask. Ask! Ask! Oh, well, then, would you take care of Lady Ermintrude? Get her into something sort of... You know, and, uh, 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 you know. Yes, I know. And a fat lot of good it's done me. Yes, all right. Well, you get her to that cave by the edge of the forest. Because by midnight, she ought to be in position. What position? Well, How about hanging 
from the roof by her eyelashes. Oh, I don't know that one. Oh, less of this nonsense. Quick, there's not much time. There never is. Come along, Squirmy Ernie. Let's get you into battle dress. Well, there we are. Love potion, triple strength. Excellent. But Merlin. Yeah? How are we going to get him to drink it? Easy. To... Ah, see what you mean. I know. I know what we'll do. We'll disguise the bottle. What a clever lad. Uh, I'm not just a beard, you know. I've got brains here. Wait. Here's some labels. What about this one? What? Merlin's patent antifreeze for cold nights. Excellent. Right, great. Lovely. Here, yeah, we'll have to be on our way. It's five minutes to midnight. How can you tell? How can I tell? <laughs> the little sand is at 12 and the big sand is at 11. <laughs> And so the knights stand vigil and catch their death of colds. And unbeknownst to pure heart, the cunning plot unfolds. Nearby the lady needs a sword, her bonds to have undone. And hopes pure heart will get his out and come and give her one. <laughs> I am Sporticus Correspondicus of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. <laughs> no, you're not. You are Sir Gay, my high steward. Yes, well, that's from nine to five, but on the money you pay me, I have to work nights. Uh, tell me, sire, wouldst grant me an exclusive interview? Yes, very well. <laughs> what is it you wish to know? Well, I mean, say, let's face it, we've only got three months to the Michaelmas edition. Not much time, really. Right. So if you could sort of fill me in with the background. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it seems that, uh, in that cave there is the Lady Armentrua. My big. What was that for? We don't know who is in the cave, do we? Oh, of course not. I forgot. Royal Burke. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, it would seem that some uh, uh, lady or other <laughs> has got herself tied up in that cave, you see, and uh, we're going to get her out. Oh, well, do you anticipate any trouble? Well, me, myself, personally, no, because I'm not going in there, am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's much too dangerous, you see. There may be a dragon in there. <clears throat> a lot of them about this time of year. Yes. No, 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 I'm sending in my top boy, Sir Pureheart. Huh? Sir! Ah! Ah! You do me a great honour. Yes, and if you're not more careful with your weapon, you'll do me a great injury. <laughs> And tell me, uh, to what do you attribute your phenomenal successes? To a simple life of chastity, temperance and virtue. And to the magical properties of Merlin's patent antifreeze for cold nights. Just the thing to get a night started on a cold morning. You know I never take stimulants. Yes. Well, have you worked out plans for rescuing these damsels in, in distress? Well, I thought I'd just uh, toddle in and lay about me. <laughs> I'm a pretty fair layabout. Yeah. Of course, it depends how many dragons there are in there. If there are more than six, things could get pretty hot. Then you'll need a good dose of Merlin's patent dragon's breath deflamifier. I'd never get the dragon to drink it. The dragon doesn't drink it, you drink it. It's not strong drink, is it? I wouldn't want to break my vow of temperance. You wouldn't break that. Drink. Yes. Mm. It's quite nice, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely. Have some mm. more. <laughs> Hurry up, Merle. Get him into the cave. Shh. Mm. Oh, quiet. Let him drink some more. It's very difficult to work out the exact dosage of these love potions. Come on. Soup up, lad. Put airs on your escutcheon. Oh. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Cheeky. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing this evening? Huh? Get him into the cave. Get into the cave. Mm. Get him. Oh. Sorry, got to go now. See Just about the dragon. See you later. Get him. Oh. Get him. Oh. Get him. Oh. For Chesterton. <laughs> For temperance! <laughs> oh! Doctor! <laughs> By George, he nearly had you then. Another mum than he would have. <laughs> By George, he's putting up a great fight. Ah, uh, won't do him any good. You don't know Squammy Ermy. But this could take all night. Oh, you do know Squammy Ermy. <laughs> Merlin. Yes, dear? Oh. Yeah. They're still at it, then. Yeah, it won't be long now. No one. Up again. Oh. Still... Ah! Wait! What is it? Ah. Oh. Listen! What? What do you hear? Nothing. as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any more 
trouble with him. No. We really have to hand it to Lady Ermintrude. Well, here I am, sire. Now, when would you like me to start? Start? But you should have you, been... You were supposed to... Then who? Oh, what a night that was! That really was! What a night! <laughs> But I'd like Miss Dawkins to do her song now. We must push on, you know. We only have one more day's rehearsal. Oh, very well. A telegram, Malone. Five across. You can tell a male chicken from a female chicken by his... what? How many letters, Malone? Four across, beginning with C. Four beginning with C? Yes. By his crow, Malone. By his crow. Yes, punter. <laughs> oh, have you got a rubber? Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, it certainly keeps the old brain box moving. That's the main thing. Thank you, punter. By the way, how long since I solved a murder? Oh, three or four weeks at least, my lord. Oh. <coughs> oh, excuse me, my lord. This telegram just arrived for you. Oh, uh, open it up, will you, punter? Oh, certainly, my lord. Thank you. Dear Lord Peter Flimsy, knickers. Knickers. Knickers, my lord. Is, is that all? Yes, my lord. Well, who's it from? Either from a person called Knickers, who has nothing to say, or else the message was Knickers, and the sender wishes to remain anonymous. I got it. Amelia Forbush. Amelia Forbush? Do you mean Britain's leading exponent on uh, secret ciphers, jazz music, and uh, cenopods? I do. I believe that she sent me that telegram. You see, I said if there was anything she ever wanted to get in touch with me. Well, shall I go out and buy her a pair? Oh, no, no. Knickers is her code word. <laughs> we must go there right away. Now go where, my lord? To Sin Creek. It's an anagram of Nickers. Yes, I do believe you're right, my lord. Especially if it's spelt with one E and two Ks. Right. Ah, there we are. Sin Creek, Essex. Population 204. We must motor down there right away. Well, I'll go and pack, my lord. Uh, will it be the usual? Oh, yes. Fingerprint powder, uh, plus fours and a fair I'll pull over. Well. Very good, my lord. And what about your pair of Oxford bags? Oh, send them a bunch of flowers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, it's all very upsetting, Inspector. Especially with our concert happening so soon. Yes, I realize that, Vicar, but what can you tell me about the victim? Oh, very little, I'm afraid. He'd only been in the village a fortnight. Well, what was he? Oh, he was a light baritone. More of a tenor, <laughs> really. I mean his occupation. Oh, I don't think he had one. Well, what sort of a man was he? Oh, it's very hard to say. Well, perhaps you could give me your impression of him. Oh, well, I'll try. I'm only a wandering bird of old, but good night. Oh, I think I've started too high. Vicar. Do you have her exact address, my lord? Good heavens, no, I left it in London. But I remember her telephone number. Pull in somewhere and I'll give her a ring. Very good, my lord. Is that old Charlie? No, that's his horse. <laughs> yeah, what can I do for you? Uh, I wonder if I might choose... Oh, your... certainly, sir. It's straight out there. Oh, oh, no, no, no. If I might choose your telephone. <laughs> oh, well, that ain't out there. Of course, sir. It's right through there in the parlour. Thank you so much. Yes, I... oh. Here, mind your head on that bean. It's ever so low. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks. Is there anything you fancy while he's phoning? Can you accommodate us? Well, there's only me around here that does it. Unless you fancy having a go at Dangler's Bottom. Pardon? That's the next village four miles away, but the pub ain't up to much. Oh, well, I'm sure it will be much more pleasant here with you. Oh, certainly, sir. Well, sign the register. Thank you. Do. Yeah, don't mind that bean. It's very old. Uh, I'm awful sorry. I've just spoken to Miss Forbush. It appears that a man's been murdered in the village hall. Oh, yes. Horrible it was. Poor Mr Longhammer. He was staying here, you know. And we are, too, my lord. Good. That'll give us a chance to search his room. Oh, well, you won't find that hard. You're sleeping in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Inspector. I thought you'd finish. That's all right, Maisie. Lord Flimsy, what the hell are you doing here? Good Lord, it's our old friend, Inspector Bungler. And I'd like you to know you'll get no help from me. See you later, Maisie. Oh, all right, Inspector. Well, I hope you haven't touched anything, Inspector. What I do when I'm off duty is no concern of yours. <laughs> oh, dear, you know. Connected with the murder. Oh, that. Well, I'd move the body. Why? People kept tripping over it. <laughs> I don't suppose you have a photograph we could look at? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Here's one of me and the wife at South End. <laughs> Hello, my lord. What's this? I say, careful, punter. It might be poison. No, my lord. It's grape water. Grape water? As given to infants. Curious. Flush it down. <laughs> Flush what, what down? The great dual robbery at Flush It Down, the home of Lady Flush It. Some 12 years ago. She was very keen on folk dancing, as I recollect. Lady Flushett was upstairs in her boudoir on the night of the robbery with a seafaring gentleman. While the sailor was showing her his hornpipe. <laughs> a most vigorous dance, my lord. I say, blew all her fuses. Yes. And when the lights came on, my lord, all her jewellery had vanished. And so had the sailor. But he left behind a bottle of gripe water. I say, Punter, you've got your fingerprints all over that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Say, my lord, huh? it would seem that Mr. Longhammer is a seafaring gentleman as well. You mean... Colicky Bill, the sailor. 
Just a moment, Hunter. Listen. Oh, oh uh, sorry, sir. I, I, I was just dusting the key out. What, with your ears? Oh, well, all right. The inspector asked me to keep an eye on your doings. You would have been better employed had you kept an eye on Mr Longhammer's doings. Oh, did you? You mean, it wasn't really Mr Longhammer? Well, of that we can't be certain. <coughs> Colicky Bill had two unmistakable features. Oh, well... Mr. Longhammer only had one. Did he have false hair and a large tattoo mark on his stomach? I don't know. I only saw his tattoo mark. You see, he always kept his hat on. I tell you what, Punter. We'll pop in and see the vicar first, and then we'll go and visit Miss Fourbush. Nice old girl, you know. I, I do wish I'd brought her down a present. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think she'd like that. What is it? A gear lever, my lord. Our gear lever? It will be when the car's paid for. Oh, lord, it seems to have been sawn through with a hacksaw. Yes, well, we can't say that for certain, my lord. It may have been done with a file. You know what, Hunter? My lord. I'd stop if I were you. Yes, well, I am endeavouring to apply pressure to the footbrake, my lord. Well, we're not slowing down. Well, the footbrake is rather loose, my lord. <laughs> uh, 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 apply the handbrake. Very good, my lord. Yes. Oh. <laughs> push, push the clutch in. <laughs> the clutch, my lord. Oh. You know what, Hunter? Yes, my lord. I think somebody is trying to do us in. And I think they are succeeding. Yes. Will you take the wheel, my lord? Yes, just a minute, Hunter. Right. Thank you. <laughs> ah! I'm doing. I shall endeavour to sever the fuel line, my lord, thus cutting off the supply of petroleum to the engine. Would you put your hand on it, lord? Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Is that petroleum, my lord? I certainly hope so. <laughs> so they thought the victim was that well-known jewel thief, William Barnacle, alias Collickyville, the sailor. Well, that's what they said. Well, it can't be him. He's on Devil's Island. <laughs> what was that? Sounds like my greenhouse. Good Lord, Hunter. Is this the vicarage? No, sir. No, my Lord, I, I think we're back at the Rosen crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Pints of bitter. No, for my greenhouse. <laughs> Shove it on his lordship's bill, will you? Certainly, sir. <laughs> How is your head, my lord? Oh, I, I think I must have banged it on the windscreen. <laughs> I, I say, punter, can you hear any bells? Well, yes, my lord. Oh, thank goodness for that. I thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> the church bells! How many was it? Um, nine, I think. Maybe it was eight. I wasn't really counting. Oh, no, no! It was nine! Nine! <laughs> That's mine. Oh, I'm sorry. It's he, sir. It's the old cobbler, is it? 
Just a second, that's mine. What are you doing? Oh, no, I won't have one just now, sir. Thank you very much. A bit too early for me, sir. I'll see you later on, sir. <laughs> what is going on here? Well, you see, sir, all the church bells have different names, and that one that just sounded is called the Old Cobbler. What does it signify? Well, it signifies, sir, that someone else in the village has been murdered. Good Lord. Why was he laughing? Oh, that's the new grave digger. He's on piecework. <laughs> Oh, certainly, Inspector. There is a body in your shrubbery. Yes, I know. Well, my superiors aren't going to like it back at the yard. Well, you can't leave it in the shrubbery. It'll ruin my performance. I don't intend to. Now, when did you first notice it was there? Oh, I didn't. Young Felicity found it. My niece. Oh, I see. It was found by your niece. Yes. She's awfully good at finding things. Some people are, you know. Well, what was she doing when she found it? Playing in the shrubbery. How old is she? Thirty-seven. Well, what was she playing in the shrubbery? Hold that tiger. Hold that tiger? Yes, on her saxophone. She was rehearsing for the village concert, you see. I see. Well, when shall I be able to see her? Well, she comes on immediately after Fred Hogswallop and his dancing fit. <laughs> Madam, the concert is on Saturday. I should like to see her before then. Well, she's up at the church hall bandaging the vicar after that vicious attack on him. Vicious attack on the vicar? Who by? Well, by the dancing ferret, of course. If you want my opinion, that animal should not be allowed in the show. It is not only vicious, but it can't dance. Well, I don't doubt it's doing its best. I'll say good day to you, Miss Forbush. <laughs> found him. Good Lord, what a horrible sight. That's the gardener. You're in the wrong shrubbery. Oh, sorry. He's very dead, my Lord. Any idea who he is? No, but I found this scrap of paper. It was pinned to the body. I tiddy, I tiddy tum tum toot, toot tiddy I tie sting. I think it was scored for the drums. Come with me. I'll play it for you. I tiddy, I tiddy, tum, tum, toot. Shoot, tiddy, I tie, stick. <laughs> now, does that mean anything to you? N not a great deal at the moment. <laughs> Excuse me, my lord. Supposing we consider it as an anagram. An anagram? Good lord, yes. I tiddy I tiddy tum tam toot, toot tiddy I tie sting. I did it, I did it, I did him in. I am the tooting. Tattoo whistle. Oh, Lord Peter, absolutely brilliant. Thank you, my lord. That's all I wish to know. That clears up the case nicely. Clears it up? Yes, you see, the tooting tattooist is an old accomplice of Colicky Bill. Good lord, was he? Yes, and on the night of the flush it down robbery. He was in the kitchen tattooing the butler to keep him occupied whilst Colicky Bill was upstairs doing the arm pipe. A fact we were not aware of, my lord. And on their escape from Devil's Island, they returned here, having obviously hidden the loot in the vicinity. They quarrelled, the tooted tattooist stabbed Colicky Bill, and in a moment of remorse, took his own life in the shrub. You mean he was the tooting tattooist? Undoubtedly. Well, Panther, that sort of wraps it up, doesn't it? Possibly, my lord, and possibly not. So it's all solved, then? Yes, Maisie. When are you off? Right away. Oh, I thought you might stay for a bit. Well, that's very kind of you, Maisie, but I've got to get back to the yard. <laughs> I'm sorry for the delay, my lord, but I've been at Flushed Down speaking with Lady Flushed. And on my way back, I decided to drop off at the mortuary to examine the body of Colicky Bill. Oh, yes. Only it was not the body of Colicky Bill. Then who was it? Lady Flushet's butler. What? Oh, yes, he bore a slight resemblance to him, you know, but... Except that he was bald. But what about the hair? False, my lord. Stuck to his head with glue. 
And the tattoo. Ah, well, now, the butler was in on the robbery. He helped organize the escape from Devil's Island when they all met up. Colic, he got the butler drunk, glued the false hair to his head, while the tooting tattooist tattooed a duplicate tattoo mark on his stomach. Poor devil. Yes, the butler was half stewed, glued, and tattooed. And the tattooist was grabbed, stabbed in Casey Black. <laughs> and Colicky Bill. He's still at large, my lord. Oh, oh you've dropped your hairbrush, my lord. Oh, thank you. <laughs> After him, Hunter. Yes, my lord. Quickly. Sorry. After him. My lord. Your hairbrush. Excuse me, Vicar. Hmm? Have you seen a man wearing Siemens oil skins? Oh, yes. Oh, then, then where is he? On stage. They all are. What? One, two, three. <laughs> is on stage at this very moment. Yes, but which one is he? Excuse me, my lord. Conky Bill Seach. No! But it may contain the fashion dial. No, it's the dancing fairy card. Oh, 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 Diamonds. Yes, that's right. And the first man to make a move gets this in his gizzards. It's old Charlie the Grave Digger. No, Vicar, it's Colicky Bill. Oh, don't be silly, it can't be. It doesn't look anything like him. <laughs> Plastic surgery. Yes. Right, now let's get up against the wall with your hands above your heads. <laughs> It wasn't you, it was the ferret. It flashed up his trouser leg. Oh dear, that's nice. Well, caught the murderer then, didn't we? Yes, my lord. And I must say, it was a great deal easier than catching that dancing ferret. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Lord, what's that, Hunter? That's the nine old cobblers again, my lord. Meaning that someone else in the village has been murdered. Wonder who? We must turn back. <laughs> oh no! Not again. Oh, cobblers! <laughs> Heave to, Millie. Heave to, girl. Oh, Admiral, they 
I've locked the dining room door. Yes, I'm afraid you're too late for tea, Admiral. Oh, oh, I am, am I? Well, I don't suppose we miss much. <laughs> oh, on the contrary, it was quite scrumptious. What was it? Assorted shellfish. As a matter of fact, I ate your ration. Yes, you would. Well, they don't agree with some people. Oh, they do with me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I never damn well did. Scared of man. Stop a lingering. Come on, up. Damn it, Admiral. The man needs medical attention. He will before I finish with his get up, sir. It's too late for that. How do you know, madam? Are you a doctor? No, I am a fortune teller. You mean you foretold his end? Let us merely say, madam, I foretold there would be a room vacant. Take me bags up, Paul, sir. Get up, man. <coughs> Telegram along. Oh, thank you, Punter. Uh, open it for me, will you? Very good, my lord. Yes. <clears throat> Ignore previous telegram. <laughs> Ignore which previous telegram? Well, I imagine, my lord, the one we've not yet received. Oh, well, then when we get it, we'll ignore it. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. After what happened, I may be in the club. <laughs> lord. Local doctor blames a winkle. A clanger. Obviously. A clanger. Do we know a young lady of that name, Milan? No, certainly not. Thank heavens for that. Hmm. Clanger. Clanger. That does ring a bell. <laughs> so I believe, my lord. <laughs> you know, the only clanger I know is dear old Admiral Clanger. Admiral! Admiral! I got them off! Well, get them on again. We're leaving. <laughs> Telegrams. Never mind that. Wheel me round to the yacht club. I'm not staying in this damn place a minute longer. I'm afraid you'll have to, Admiral. I phoned the yacht club and there's no vacant rooms. Damn and dust. Can't get in club. Still in hotel. Ignore previous telegram. A clanger. I'm sorry for the delay, my lord, but I've been to the post office inquiring about the previous telegram. W which previous telegram? Uh, the previous the previous telegram. Oh, well, what happened to it? Well, the telegram boy fell off his bicycle and down a coal hole, my lord. Shall I open it? Why, is he still down there? Uh, no, my lord, uh, I have it here. Oh, yes, well, uh, open it. Very good, my lord. Thanks. <laughs> right, terribly <sorry. clears throat> Require your assistance urgently. Man murdered, I'm sure I was intended victim. Staying at the Laurels, Flashwick Bay, Admiral Clanger. What on earth goes on down in Flashwick Bay? One can only conjecture, my lord. Shall I pack your raincoat? No, I think I'm going to need it. What's the weather report? Well, it's very unsettled and inclined to be windy. So it seems is poor old Admiral Clagger. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mrs. McFluke, you are the landlady. Oh, indeed I am, Inspector. <laughs> Don't disturb the evidence. I'm paying my last respects to Major Melody. <laughs> well, he's not buried under the carpet. I can't imagine who would wish to murder him. Well, somebody did. Those winkles he ate were full of arsenic. Well, I'm changing the fishmonger. What more can one do? The fishmonger has been cleared. Those winkles were injected with arsenic in the interregnum. And exactly whereabouts on a winkle is there? <laughs> I mean, madam, the period between purchase and consumption. Now, you see, nobody else at the table suffered any ill effects. Nobody. Hmm. And the incident occurred after you served tea to your residents, an assorted shellfish tea. Yes, hmm. consisting of cockles, mussels, winkles, brown bread and butter and blancmange, on top of which they had a choice of cheddar <laughs> cheese, chipolatas and chutney. So they had a choice? Yes. You see, after the assorted shellfish tea was served, Mrs. Shawncliffe said to the servant that shellfish made her sick, and she was sure she would suffer in a shocking fashion should she sample them. Could you repeat that? No. <laughs> Admiral! Ah! Thought they'd got me. Well, what is it? Here you are, sir. I borrowed them off the Sea Scouts. Oh, good work, Potter. Good work. They tried to do me in again. They won't catch me napping. No, sir. No, I intend teaching Nurse Teasel how to semaphore. To what end, sir? Yeah, uh, we're all right on Rios. Yes. I, I intend putting her on lookout, and if she sees any suspicious characters lurking about, she can wave her knockers. Wave her knockers? Don't you mean her knickers? 
No man, her knockers. Enemy raiders now on course. Action stations! Then what happens? Then she waves the knickers to divert attention while I get me cutters out. <laughs> Sash, Harry! When you ate the shellfish, Mrs. Shawncliffe said that she couldn't eat. Need your medidic. What, on top of Admiral Clanger's portion? On top of Colonel Postwick's portion, Mrs. Pearson's portion, and Professor Porter's portion. Was there any portion that he didn't eat? No. He was awfully fond of shellfish. Ah, well, that explains why nobody else at the table suffered any ill effects. Nay, what? You're not a detective for nothing, are you? <laughs> no, madam. I get six pounds ten a week for it. My <laughs> word, Admiral, what's that you're doing? I'm doing a pee. What about the queue? I've just been over that twice. I don't know what you're doing. I'm going over it again. I do wish you'd stop waving it about. Oh, come on, Admiral. I want to go as well. All right, Millie. Try the sea. <laughs> Lord Ponder, what was that all about? It would appear, my lord, that the hotel facilities are somewhat inadequate. Oh. Oh. There is one possibility you haven't considered, Inspector. And what's that? A suicide. A good idea, madam. I shall stick your statement about the shellfish into shorthand, send it to my superiors, have a shoe shine, shave and shampoo, and shoot myself. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Uh, no, uh, just uh, looking for a mace. <laughs> Why, it isn't our old friend Inspector Bungler. And what are you doing? Lane Lino. <laughs> Does that line represent the body? No, the map of Majorca. Um, you may have the late Major's room, Lord Peter, only it hasn't been tidied up yet. Oh, please, don't do anything to it. Leave it exactly as it is. <coughs> you know, I really must look him up in Burke's peerage. I suppose he is one. He certainly is, in my opinion. <laughs> I say, are you looking for something? Mace. Mace? Mice. Mice. Okay. A moose. Moose. A mouse. Well, mace. I'm the local vermin exterminator. But then you worry. I'll be back the new. Do you know, I, I think he was looking for something. Yes, I'm sure he wasn't, though. Then let's find out what it was. Oh, <laughs> This is very interesting, my lord. Huh? Oh. Flashwick Bay Eel and Winkle Parlour. Oh, is there anything in it? A winkle, my lord. Have you a pin? Uh, yes, certainly. Oh, no. Thank you, my lord. You're, you're, you're not going to eat that, are you? Oh, no, no. This winkle contains a piece of paper, my lord. Oh, well, good lord. Hunter, they're probably all individually wrapped. Oh, no, I shouldn't think so, my lord. No. <laughs> this paper contains a message. Of course. There you. we are, yes. Thank you. See poem in Lou. Sorry, posh, W.C. Do you mind if I look at that? By all means. Thank you. <laughs> Where are you two off to? Oh, just puffing along to the... Uh... No, you're not. I'm going to the... What? Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> after you, my lord. After that, after you. Thank you. Huh. Oh, I say it's a bit much, punter. Yes, my lord. Inspector! Will you be in there much longer? Mind your own business. Uh, we do have another one, you know. Where? Downstairs. Thank you. Have you any more? <laughs> There's one on the top floor. Thank you. And by the way, what was he doing in there with a magnifying glass? Ah, well, you, you see, the inspector has a small problem. Hello? <laughs> it's me, Potter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I say, punter, there's nothing in mine. Uh, well, there's something written down here in very small writing on the skirting board, my lord. Oh. Excuse me, punter. Mm -hmm. No, no, oh. no. Your glass, then. Oh, yes. Thank you, punter. Yeah. Mm. What does it say, my lord? It says, what are you doing down here? I thought it might. Yeah. I would... Here. 
There's something else written over here. Yes, my lord. I, I can't read it. Uh -huh. oh, why not? Well, it's written upside down. Have you any more? Hey, is that one out of order? No, but I'm not finished yet. <laughs> Can you read it, Hunter? Aye, uh, yes, my lord. It is a poem. And it says, Who carried on with the Colonel's daughter, doing things they didn't ought her? She got a clout when the Colonel caught her. I could write more, but my pencil's getting shorter. Yeah. Oh, let it, let... That's all I need to know. <laughs> when your face is full of crinkles, cheer it up by eating winkles. Uh, it don't matter how you feel, you'll improve with jelly deals. <laughs> <laughs> it seems as though the proprietor is something of a poet, Punter. Yes, my lord, it may indicate that we shall find further examples of his handiwork in the loo. I want... Yes, sir? What can I do for you? Just a moment. Aren't you the hotel porter? Only part-time, sir. I do it to help out. Winkles is a bit quiet at the moment. Now, what would you like? Uh, I was wondering if we might use your convenience. Well, you could if I have one, sir. You haven't got one? I'm afraid not, sir. Then what's behind that door? That is my stock room, sir, where I keep my stock. Nothing else? Now, look, I've already told you there's nothing in there but L's and winkles. <laughs> they sound remarkably frisky. I thought you said winkles were quiet at the moment. They are. That's the amusement arcade. I back onto the haunted house. Oh, I see. It drives you up potty at times, all that screaming and cackling. There is something written on the door, Malone. Yeah, private. No. Was it true or was I dreaming when I heard those winkles screaming? For there is no loo behind me. In the anagram you will find me. Who wrote that then? Oh, probably some customer desperate to find the loo. Well, there is one on the pier. <laughs> Gold knows where the anagram is. <laughs> I'm certain it's this, my lord. Yes, it's that loo business that's throwing us. Mm. I wish we had something else to go on. <sighs> po. <laughs> oh, well, I don't think there is one. No, a polo. <coughs> of course, the major was commissioned in India. It's obvious. Uh, polo in the pool water polo. No, no, no. I, I, I don't think so, my lord. Um... Oh. <clears throat> what else does one get in India? <sighs> my sword chopper. What? My sore is in India, my lord. The state of which Bangalore is the capital. The my sore chopper, my yes, sore. Yes, my lord. Why? S O R E. My sore. Um, C H O P P E R. My sore chopper. Uh, I S N O W. Uh, is now. Uh, L O O S E. My sore chopper is now loose. Who oh, is it? And what have you been up to? Hello, Inspector. Does the name Bangalore Lulu convey anything to you? Good heavens, Lord Flimsy. Bangalore Lulu? Did you know her? Only by repute. It appeared that she used to pose as a fortune teller and lure innocent men to her bungalow in Bangalore. Well, she blackmailed them. In conjunction with a criminal known as Charwala Charlie. Charwala Charlie would rush in with a chopper posing as the outraged husband. Yes, and one of their victims fought back, however. Charlie threw the chopper at him. It missed. Went straight through the window and killed a passing Maharaja. Charlie and Lulu escaped, but afterwards quarrelled. Whereupon, Charlie attacked her with his chopper. And gave her arsenic. <laughs> he did indeed, my lord. In several places. Delhi, Bombay, and Calcutta. The doses were insufficient. She turned him in, and he got life imprisonment. Yes, but he swore that he would escape and revenge himself upon her. Yes, but how does this tie up with poison winkles? Oh, good question, Bungler. How does it, Hunter? That's a good question, my lord. Inspector, have you arrested Colonel Postwick yet? A good question. No. Why? We've checked up lately who's been buying arsenic. And who had? Major Meredith. The victim. The victim. I'm beginning to wonder if the landlady wasn't right. Perhaps it was. Suicide. Possibly, Inspector. 
and possibly not. Oh, you startled me. <laughs> I do apologize, Mrs. McFlute. Well, what are we doing? Uh, merely topping up the vinegar bottles. <laughs> With water? Well, uh, vinegar is such a dreadful price these days. Uh, do excuse me. <clears throat> I say, steady, punter, that might be poison. It is, my lord. Arsenic. Arsenic? So it's Mrs. McFleet. Possibly, my lord, but we must be certain. Yes, in that case, we'll pay another visit to the Eel and Winkle parlor. Very good, my lord. Oh, good afternoon, my lord. Eels or Winkles? Aren't you the fortune teller? Uh, yes, yes, they work here part time. Everybody seems to work here part time, my lord. Now, look here, what do you want? The Mysore chopper thrower. <gasps> you? Our Bangalore Lulu. No, 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 I'm her sister. Calcutta Kate. Yes. Oh, I knew she was in danger. When I heard that Char while Charlie was loose, I sent her the message in the winkle to, to warn her and bring her here. Then why that poem on the door? Oh, that was just in case she come when I was out. If you're staying at the hotel, why couldn't you warn her there? Well, I had to be so careful. Char while Charlie's a master of disguise. He could have been anyone. Then who wrote that poem in the Hotel Lou? Got no idea. Wasn't it upside down on the skirting board? Yes, and extremely difficult to read. When it's come to that, extremely difficult to write. <laughs> Except, of course, by a yogi. Yes, he was by one. A student of yoga, my lord. They can stand on their heads for hours. Damn it, Millie. What are you doing upside down? Oh. It's yoga, Admiral, an art I learnt in India. What's that for, then? Well, it stops you getting it. That's true. I wouldn't stand on my head for it. Go! Don't be a damn fool, Millie. I've got the gun! Ah! Millie, get him to death! Oh, get his foot! Don't stand there. Fan it! Fan it! Do something! Blow on it, woman! Come here. Can you read it now, my lord? Oh, that's much better, Punter. Yes, thank you. You must pay the price for flirting. Soon your pocket, I'll be hurting. Message continues on lavatory skirting. Pay up Bangalore Lulu. Oh, my lord. Yeah. This way. Mm, my leg doesn't brush you. Ah! You see, my lord? Yes? The, the verse you've just read mm -hmm. obviously refers to the one we've already seen in the loo. Yeah. The white bigger one. Oh, so it's, it's blackmail. Yes, my lord. You see, she knew that Major Meredith <coughs> practiced yoga. Oh, yes. Therefore, yes. she left those messages where he alone could see them. So he bought the arsenic to get rid of her? Yes, he put it in her water carafe. And Mrs. McFlute, as is her wont, watered the vinegar with it. Yes. And he poured them on his winkles. And unwittingly, <laughs> wasn't himself. Yes. Well, that about sort of wraps it up. Except for one point, my lord. The Mysore chopper thrower is still at large. Ah! ah. Uh, hello, Admiral. On your own, eh? What? No, 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 no. Millie's in there having a fortune told. Steady, Admiral. I'm sorry, Potter. I keep forgetting it's illegal. It's a damn stupid law. I suppose they'll change it one day. In the meantime, you could get me done for aiding and abetting. That's another stupid law. You know, it's a damn good job you can get a bet on here. <laughs> You'll get me on before you're finished. So that's it. Bookmaking. Madam Petra predicts the winners while Potter, the part-time porter, pops out and pops the bond. It's comparatively harmless sir, pastime, my lord. Oh, yes, but it does explain the secrecy. Well, you've got to keep it quiet. <coughs> What's that? I told you. That's the haunted house. Not this time. <coughs> Earth's going on Oh, here. he come through that wall. Three strokes with his weapon and he was through here. Lulu? Well, well, she dodged him and ran through there with him after her. Well, who the hell's Lulu? Oh, Nurse Teasel, we did suspect Save her. her. Save her! Save her! Hands to action station! Hands to what? Follow your dad. We're out of the way, woman. Let's... Let's get her out of the way, woman. Let's get Say, Punter, we should have found out what he looked like. We should know him by his chopper, my lord. Yes, but what if he's got it concealed? <laughs> no, 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 no. Is that him? No, it's hardly likely, my lord. Yes, well, they did say he was a master of disguises. Yes, well, come along, my lord. Please, Punter. <laughs> oh, 
Can't be too careful, Potter. Reminds me of a gunner's mate I knew in Whale Island. Right. Mutinous swine, he was always complaining about the food. <laughs> ah, <not so. Yes, my lord, with a nasty nick oh. in his knickers. Let's just say well and truly, Nick. Old Nick himself. <laughs> I merely borrowed the costume. It suits you, Inspector. Now then, where's Bangalore Lulu? Oh, don't worry, Inspector. If you don't catch her, somebody who looks like you will. I see they haven't found her yet, Punter. Yes, my lord. And this has just come through the letterbox, my lord. Oh, what's in it? Well, well. Well, another wing call. Sorry, shall I open that, my lord? Oh, yes, would you, Hunter? I think I've got a pin here. It doesn't matter, my lord. Oh. Well, fiendishly clever. <laughs> yes, that's very good, that. Eh? Not at all, sir. Yes. Thank you very much, Hunter. I say it. Very cleverly tucked in, isn't it? clammy, really. Eh? Yes, it is very damp tonight. Just to inform you, I've now gone straight. Soon I'm marrying a bosun's mate. He's three parts Irish. One part Zulu. So up you all, Bangalore Lulu. <laughs> Sir. Clutson, you really must do something about that parlour maid. Lily, does she not give you satisfaction? Well, I don't know. I haven't managed to catch her yet. <laughs> what have you got there, Clutson? It is a telegraphic communication, sir. Well, uh, looks like a silver salver to me. It is on a silver salver, sir. Uh, 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 well, what's it for? It is a means of conveying important information. Well, uh, uh, Sir Harry Bulge and Plunger, 221 B Eaton Place, London. Well, that's damn silly. I know that already. <laughs> sir, the message is contained within the envelope, well, sir. By Gad, you're right. Class, what does it say here? Arriving Southampton stop. Boat train about to start stop. Can't stop stop. Feeling tip top stop. Signed, Willie. <laughs> Willie? 
Who the devil is Willie? Your son, sir, the young master. You may remember a year ago he announced he was embarking on a geological expedition to the primeval forests of the Amazon Basin. The Amazon Basin? I thought he said St Albans. <laughs> well, 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 so he's coming home. Hello, Daddy, who's coming home? Your brother Willie, see. I say, what jolly fun. Oh, look, there's a PS. Oh, really? What does it say? It says, P stop, S stop, bring the chum stop, Thought he might drop in for a chop stop. Must stop, stop. <laughs> good. Then, Clodson, there will be guests for dinner tonight. Inform the good Mrs. B, the fatted calf, eh? <laughs> and we'll have the Bollinger 92. Oh. <laughs> this will be a light night to remember. It certainly will, sir. You can rely on Mrs. Bridges. <laughs> Honestly, Mrs. Bridges, he nearly had me that time. Really, my girl, I don't know what you're worried about. Even if he did catch you, he wouldn't know what to do with you. Now, go away and take it. Now, where was I? Uh, one whole onion. Little grated cheese. Oh, Mrs B! That ain't cheese. That's carbonic. <laughs> oh, sorry, kids. <laughs> now, what comes next? Little wine to taste. Oh, just right. Oh, hello, Mr. Clodson. Little wine to taste. There well, isn't time for that now, Mrs. B. We have a wee panic on our hands. I was. What are you preparing for dinner? Oh, God knows. It's a sort of last week's leftovers a la carbolic. Well, it won't do. We're having guests. Oh, well, I'll just bang a whole tin of curry powder in. They'll never notice. The young master is returning from his travels. It's an occasion for celebration. I thought he'd only gone to St Albans. Oh, really, me no. He's been on a geological expedition to the Amazon, looking for rare minerals and ores. He'd have done just as well in St Albans. <laughs> By the way, Mrs. B, how many bottles of Bollinger 92 have we? Two dozen. Oh, well, that should be sufficient. No, it won't. They're all empty. <laughs> Mrs. B, that is very naughty of you. You might have left one for me. It will have to be replaced. Starkers! Yes, Mr. Clodopper? You will refer to me as Mr. Clodson. Righto, Mr. Clod. Clodson. <laughs> Whatever you say, Dad. Hodson is spelt C L. It doesn't matter, never mind. Just go down in the cellar and get me a large bottle of cider. Right away, Mr. Clodopper. <laughs> what a jolly spiffing day it has turned out to be. Uh, you mean about Willie and his chum coming back from St. Albans? South America, Daddy. Oh, don't be stupid. It's up somewhere near Watford. Oh, silly, Daddy. <laughs> no, it's not only Willie and his chum. I've had a frightfully busy day. First, I had a highly instructive session with the new footman. Oh, Starkers? No, we kept our clothes on. <laughs> and then I heard the new tenant was moving in next door. They say she's a foreign lady, very aristocratic. Her name is the Baroness von Titzenhausen. 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 Why do you keep repeating it? Is the name familiar to you? No. I just love the sound of it. <laughs> anyway, when I heard she was arriving, I popped in and left my visiting card. Ugh, a filthy habit. Your mother had a little Pekingese bitch that was always doing that. <laughs> That's why I had to have her put down. Mother or the Pekingese bitch? <laughs> I'm dashed if I can remember. Have another cup of tea. Cream or lemon? Titsenhausen. <laughs> oh, that might be the young master and his new friend. You carry on with the Bollinger, Mrs. B. And remember, it's one part cider to two parts of soda water. <laughs> Go and teach your granny to milk ducks. <laughs> you have a visitor, sir, the Baroness von Titzenhausen. <laughs> oh, hello, ducks. Sorry to barge in, but could I borrow a cup of sugar? Baroness von Titzenhausen. Yes, that's right. I just moved in next door. Here, don't you remember 
for me? Lottie, Lottie, little Lottie Lovell. Oh, what a lovely lot of Lottie. Oh, 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 oh. Not so little anymore. <laughs> My dear, you have arrived at a deuced awkward moment, you see. We're expecting a visit from some foreign old battle axe who's moved in next door. But that's me, Lottie von Titzenhausen. You? Little Titty von Lotzenhausen. Uh, little Hausen von Lotzen Titty. <laughs> you just call me Lottie. After all, that's what you called me all those years ago when you picked me up outside the Gaggy stage door. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm terribly sorry. This is my daughter, Virginia. Oh, pleased to meet you, love. You're charmed, I'm sure. Perhaps the Baroness will care to join us for a dish of tea. Oh, not half that, but I'd rather have it in a cup. <laughs> a sparkling wit. Come on, son. Remove the tray and bring some fresh tea, will you? So, well, well, well. You are the Baroness von um, uh, Titzenhausen. <laughs> you got married there? Yes, five times. You've had five husbands. Five of me own. That's not counting the ones I borrowed. Yes, five husbands, three lords, a marquis, and then last Thursday I married the late Baron von Titzenhausen. The late Baron? When did he die? Last Friday, with the biggest smile on his face you ever saw. <laughs> so you're free again? Oh. I've never been free, lovey, but I'm getting to the age now where it pays to be reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, you are a widow, eh? That's right. No encumbrances. Oh. I wouldn't say that, my dear. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to do my own thing. Jolly good. <laughs> well, I am a widower, and from now on, I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Bulgy, maybe we could put our things together. <laughs> <laughs> so that's me, as <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, this is my son Willie, the famous explorer. He's just returned from St Albans. I've been up the Amazon, actually. Don't be ridiculous. There aren't any Amazons in St Albans. <laughs> I'd like you to meet my chum, Peter. He won't be long. He's outside paying the cabby. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are, Silas. How much was it? How much? Five pounds. Five pounds? But Victoria Station's only just round the corner. Yes, I'm a heavy tipper. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Captain Silas Crawshaw of the King's Own Household Articles. My sister Virginia. Charmed. Charmed. I'm sure we shall become great friends. Oh, my goodness. Don't let's talk about that, shall we? <laughs> Major General Sir Harry Bowden Plunger retired. Ah, an honour and a privilege, <laughs> sir. <laughs> a stout fellow, a splendid turnout, and a fine record. Yes. Fine record. You were a bit young to have been at Waterloo, weren't you? I lied about my age, sir. Well, brave lad. <laughs> Welcome home, young master. Ah, oh, thank you, Clarkson. I hear. Thank you, sir. I heard you and your companion arrive, so I took the liberty of providing a sufficiency of comestibles for all. <laughs> I say, you're new, aren't you? I'm Lily. I'm Willie. I know. Oh. <laughs> well, shall I be Mummy? I might take you up on that, my dear. Oh, Mummy. Oh, gee. <laughs> uh, She was a snotty-nosed little tyke in the Mile End Road with no seat to her knickers. Oh, be that as it may, she's a member of the aristocracy now. Yes, and I dare say she'll soon have her hands on another aristocratic member. You mean... And in the rivers they have these awfully jolly little fishes called bananas. Piranhas. <laughs> That's right, uh, piranhas. I was going to bring one back as a pet for Virginia, but on the boat we had to shoot it. Shoot it? Whatever for? We'd hate the ship's cat. Oh. And then there was this other time... Willie, you know, you still are a monumental bore. Oh, thank you, Peter. Oh. The Baroness, sir. Ah! Even all cool, I'll starving. I could eat the back end of a pearly king without salt and pepper. 
I don't know where we could obtain one at such a late hour, madam. <laughs> Dodson, tell Mrs. B to hurry up with the dinner and fetch up some champagne. Uh, champagne? Uh, <laughs> come, my dear, come and sit with me. Oh, anything to oblige a gentleman. Anything? <laughs> well, almost anything. <laughs> What happened to the Bollinger 92? Well, we ran out of soda water, so I had to use tap. <laughs> there are times when I despair, Mrs. B. I will just have to do the best I can. That was after we crossed yeah. the third... Ah, <laughs> the bubbly! Clonson, do the honours! Uh, and then another terribly exciting thing happened to us. Willie! I, I suddenly saw this tree with big leaves on it. Willie! By Jove, I said to Silas, look! Look, there's a tree with big leaves on it. Willie! Yes, Shut up! Right. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, sir. The Bollinger's a little bit frisky. Well, it's just as it should be, man. Poor man, poor! I knew a bloke once from South America. He was a Brazilian. How interesting. I believe they're very well known for their nuts. Oh, they certainly are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Clodson. Your health, oh, madam. And we in the servants' hall are hoping to see more of you. Oh, get away. If you see any more of me, I'll get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> what a girl, what a girl. <laughs> Will you marry me? Hey? Well, seeing as you caught me in between engagements, why not? <laughs> Did you hear that, everyone? Lucky and I are going to be married. Congratulations. Thank you. Quiet, please, everybody. Clodson, inform the good Mrs. Breaches to cancel the dinner. Tonight, we're going out on the town. Oh, very well, sir. I'll fetch the cloaks. Uh, may, I, uh, may I propose a toast? To the happy couple. May they find what they want and want what they find. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Money. <laughs> Hey, come along, everyone. We don't want to be there. Thank you, Cotton. And what do you call that rubbish, then? Bollinger. And Bollinger's to you, too, mate. That's water down cider and liver sauce. Now, listen here, you. You get some decent plot ready for us by the time we get back, or I'll blow the whistle on you. And if I'm going to be mistress of this house, I'll be down to see your books in the morning. Take your cab. Where would you like to go? Well, I don't be too late because those servants of mine are useless after 10 o'clock. Well, <laughs> my dear, why don't you stay here for tonight? Oh, yes, and then we can really make a night of it. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Clarkson, thank you. And put up a bed for the Baroness, will you? Yes. And one for Captain Carter. Oh, Oh, do you remember that stuff they used to put in our tea at Mafeking? Hmm? <laughs> I think it's beginning to wear off. <laughs> oh, Mr. C, you've hardly touched your dinner. Oh, I couldn't face it, Mrs. B. Oh, go on, a little nibble will do you the world of good. I couldn't face that either, Mrs. B. My word, you are in a bad way. Here, Mr. C, if you ain't having your dinner, can Starkers have it? Great useless gawk. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mr. C. <laughs> I don't know where he puts it all, or what he's building his strength up for. He never does anything. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mr. C. <laughs> Always stuffing himself, never thinks of anybody else. Oh, I certainly wouldn't say that, Mr. C. <laughs> Here, Ned, eat up. Come on, eat up, eat up. And by the way, there's a damp patch in my room I'd like you to tend to. There's no after the others are gone to bed, we'll do. <laughs> what are we going to do, Mrs. B? If I don't get some decent wine, we are going to be in trouble. You shall have some from my own private stock. A great friend, Mrs. B. How can I ever repay you? Dead easy. It'll be two quid for the bubbly and fifteen bob for the pub. It's only staving off the evil moment. We'll be down to see our accounts in the morning. Our accounts? Our accounts? Mr. C, this sounds like a horse 
of a different kettle of fish to me. <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We've got to stop the marriage. Aye, but how? With dirty, low cunning. You have a plan, Mrs B. You bet your little sticky dicky, Mr C. <laughs> Confusion. That's the key. We've got to stop the marriage and we've got to confuse the general. Well, you think he's confused enough already? Well, he'll be even more confused when he finds his precious little Lottie in the arms of another, especially when that other appears to be none other than his own son, Willie. I got... How do we manage that? Well, now, when you give them the drinks, make sure that you give them these. That's one of these to Master Willie and one to Grotty Lottie. Then, when Willie's asleep, we'll carry him out and put him in beside little Lottie. Then, when the General sees them together... <laughs> Kate, you're a genius. I know, Angus. <laughs> 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 Providing a little light refreshment, oh. sir. <laughs> yes! Oh, yes! Oh. <laughs> yes! A little wine, madam. Oh, no, thanks. I think I'll tumble off to bed. Oh, madam, sir. No. Oh, no, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Uh, uh, young master, will you have a glass of wine? It'll make you sleep. <laughs> I shan't want to sleep. <laughs> well, they do say it's very good for the... Um... <clears throat> that case, uh, cheers. <laughs> good night. Good night, sir, yeah. Ah, oh, madam, would you care for a nightcap? Oh, no, thanks. I never wear anything in bed. <laughs> Oh, mate, sir. Oh, Carlson, sir. Fetch me two dozen oysters. Two dozen? Well, some of them might not work. <laughs> Would you, will you have a drink, sir? No. Uh, sir, madam, will anybody... In the last order, please. Good night, Good night. Good night. Thank you, Carlson. Good night. Uh, Good night. I shall leave the wine here in case anybody gets the urge in the night. Good night. Good night, Good night, sir. Good night. Yes. Good night. <laughs> Yes, the, uh, the others had some as well. But which others? <laughs> They're all right. The generals understand his orders. Let's get me. <laughs>
have now got little cause to fear and war and insecurity are banished from the land for Arthur and his goodly knights have got themselves in hand <laughs> well I wasn't going to stand that from the likes of her, now, was I? So I said to her, I said, I don't care if you are a damsel in distress, I'm on nights. <laughs> <laughs> a funny thing happened to me on the way to the chows. Yeah, oops. <laughs> oh, I say, you'll have to tell me later, they're here. Pray silence for our sovereign lord, King Arthur and his consort, the Lady Guinevere. <laughs> We'll have to have him seen to. I'm sorry, sir. He's having trouble with his instruments. Uh, his bugle's not much good either. <laughs> <sighs> well, there they are, my dear. The cream of English manhood. Mm. Inside all that tin, there might be nothing but condensed milk. Don't scoff. <laughs> one day your whole well-being might well rest in one of those hands. I hope he takes his gloves off first. <laughs> <laughs> My brave and valiant knights, I bid you welcome all to the table round. The fitful moon has waxed and waned and waxed again since last we held assembly. What did he say? What is he all about? <laughs> it's been our first meeting for a month. Oh. Oh, yeah. 
Next business. Oh, that'll be the treasurer's report. <clears throat> I call upon the treasurer, sir, point of no return. Where is Sir Point of No Return? He went out. Yes, and I don't think he's coming back. I don't know why I bother. We'd better have a look and see what is left in the kitty. Would you mind? Thank you, sailor. Oh. Do you want it in round figures or to the nearest groat? I want it in round figures. Nothing. Nothing? Well, they don't come any rounder than that. <laughs> And now, it's okay. Oh, King. No, don't do that. Oh. Now, what am I going to do? Immigrate. No, no. Wait a moment. I have it, yes. <laughs> I'll pass the crown around. Oh, to that lot, you must be joking. They wouldn't give you the rust off their baldricks. Nonsense. These men are famed for their loyalty, their chivalry, and their generosity. Their largesse will stream upon this crown like the rays of the sun at noon. My loyal, faithful, and most generous knight. That's <laughs> not fair. All those wasted knights. Hello, he's playing our song. Wait a sick. Sire, why don't you go and see Merlin? I don't want to go and see Merlin. Well, then why not come along with me and have a nice lie down? <laughs> I think I'll go and see Merlin. <sighs> now then, what can I do for you? Merlin, I'm sorely troubled in my mind. What is going to become of me? Uh, the time has come for me to prognosticate. Oh, well, if you must, you must. But be quick about it. I want you to foretell my future. Future? Well, you should have said. I'll do that first. Oh, I enjoy that. Now, let me see. What method shall I use? I know. The chicken's entrails. Ugh. I thought we'd like that. Come over here. Yeah. Chicken in the basket. The Roman swore bite. You see, the idea is you look at the chicken's insides and it tells you everything you want to know. It's infallible. Well, get on with it. That's all right. <laughs> there must be an easy way for telling the truth. <laughs> All right, I'll do the talking. <laughs> oh, good gracious me. Huh? What can you see? Nothing. It's too dark in there. <laughs> oh, I can tell what's going to happen. What? It's going to lay an egg. <laughs> That's funny. What's funny about a chicken laying an egg? It's a cock. <laughs> it is. It's too warm. Oh, I'll have to get another cage. My beard always gets caught on that. I'll do something. Something written on the egg. Huh? Ah, what does it say? For further consultation, instruction, call Guinevere to wit to woo. Guinevere? Guinevere! What are you doing here? Well, I really don't know. One minute I was up on the eastern battlements. And suddenly you felt the urge? I always feel the urge. <laughs> no, 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 no. I meant suddenly you felt the urge to come down here. Yes, and I can't think why. It's the magic. I think you're going to become an oracle. Well, I'll try anything once. Shall I go behind the screen and take my clothes off? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just stay there. Relax, my lady. Yes. Do it. Do. Do it. Do. Look, this is no time for bird impressions. Shh. <laughs> do it. Do. Stand by for an important announcement. Here it comes. To King Arthur, care of Merlin, Camelot Castle. Subject, future prospects. Dear sir, from northern climes will come the man you need. Though rough of aspect, pay him every heed. And bear in mind that he and he alone can make you sit more easy on the throne. <laughs> How about that? What does it mean? That's a good question. What does it mean? What does what mean? Well, this fellow with his aspect and helping me on the throne and all that. Shh. I'll try again. Phew. Relax again, my lady. Yes. Do it, do! Do it, do! P.S. To double check his bona fides, his name is on the eggs inside his. 
So when he arrives, and not before, I beg, then go to work with safety on the egg. Who white? What do you mean, quite? Quite incomprehensible. Have you anything else to say, milady? Well, shall I or shan't I? Shall you, shan't you what? Go behind the screen and take my clothes off. She doesn't remember a thing. Oh, stand aside. To wit to woo. To wit to woo. Oh, no. You're not getting me up in the rafters with a feather boa. <laughs> Get stuffed. Hello. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. That'll be the day. Your drawbridge was hanging down, so I just popped in. Really? Well, it's a nice day, isn't it? It's freezing. Scare away. Up north, where I come from, they'd be dropping like flies from sunstroke. From northern climes will come the man you need. <laughs> no, it can't be. Are you by any chance of knightly blood? Me? Not bloody knightly. The rough of aspect pay him every heed. I wonder. <laughs> Something wrong, dear? No, no, no. It's nothing, I tell you. Nothing. Get off. I know what's wrong with you, sunshine. You got a boil on your sitter pump. Hot. Hot. Come on, let's you have a look. Come on. Get behind that tower. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get him off. Come on. Get him off. Hey, hey. That's novel. Parchment knickers. Come on, a bit lower. Woo! What a whopper. I've not seen one like that before. Hey, you could enter that for the All England Boils Fire. Hang on a jiff. This won't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, missus, he won't feel a thing. <laughs> now, let's have another look. Hey, what are you going to do? Don't worry. Look at that spider with two heads. Where? Over there, in the corner. I can't see any spider! <laughs> there you are. That didn't hurt, did it? <laughs> Don't worry, missus, he'll feel like a new man. Good. I could do with one. <laughs> <laughs> It's him! It's him! It's who? It's who? Him! He is the one who will restore all the strength and glory to Camelot. But he's not of knightly blood, not that I care. Then I will make him a knight. Hang on, hang on, what are you up to? There is just one more check to be made. If your name is the same as the name inside this egg, then I will dub thee knight. Speak, sirrah, what is your name? They call me the Boyle Doctor. The Boyle Doctor? Boyle Doctor? Ah, well, it is near enough. Arise! Sir Lancelot. <laughs> I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. I mean, he just doesn't seem to have the makings of a knight. Oh, I don't know. He's a big lad. <laughs> no, 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 you did. We don't know anything about him. Well, you should ask to see his credentials. After all, he saw yours. Ah, <laughs> oh, so <Sir> gay. <laughs> well, see for yourself. Isn't he lovely? Well, not too bad, considering what I had to work with. <laughs> I must do something about his hair. Sir Gay, you have done well. See how he stands. The very picture of English chivalry. These chain mail tights do not bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, the picture's all right, but I'll have to do something about the sound. Oh, not to worry. The Lady Guinevere will see to his elocution. Yes. And I'll take his deportment in hand as well. <laughs> right. There's no time to lose. I must issue my proclamation. 
Send for the duty proclamation issuer. Uh, hello within. The king wants his daily herald. <laughs> ah, herald, take a proclamation. Be it known by all these present that the bravest knight in all Christendom is now resident in Camelot and is prepared to defend his king's honor and his own against all miscreant knights who dare to say him nay. King's champ challenges all. <laughs> there too, by royal decree, I let cry a grand tournament upon the feast of Michaelman. Big punch up next Tuesday. <laughs> To any man who can withstand the fearsome onslaught of my mighty champion, I will grant a purse of gold. And some cash prizes. <laughs> the tourney to be held upon the castle jousting field, except the weather be inclement, whereupon it will take place within the quarters of the light cavalry. If wet, in scout hut. <laughs> Right, roll them, lads. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Now, Sir Knight, let us see how you shape up. Right you are, your majesty, lad. <laughs> Sorry about that. You've done that before, haven't you? <laughs> I said, come in. Oh, look, go and see who's at the door, will you? There's a good It chap. is your king! Well, tell him to go away. I'm busy. I've got all this on. Now, listen to me, you part-time wizard. I want a chat with that bird of yours. Oh, it is you. Oh, all right, then. Mabel? Yes, Lucy? Not that bird! The one that laid the egg. And boy, did it lay an egg. All, all right, later, Mabel. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Gone to lunch? Yes. When will he be coming back? It's coming back already, I think. As tough as old boot. Yes, and serve you both right, too. If you could see the useless idiot you've lumbered me with. I have seen him. I've seen him on my crystal ball. Very well. I'd like you to have another look at him. No, I don't want to. Come in here. Look. All right, all right. So you've got a problem. And that is the man who is going to defend my kingdom against all comers on Tuesday next. How can I possibly survive? Easy. You cheat. Me. Cheat. Yes. Arthur, the table round, famed throughout Christendom for my valor and chivalry, the truest, noblest, most honored knight in all history, defender of the faith, upholder of the right, Arthur, the immortal. Until next Tuesday. Let's cheat. <laughs> Magnificent he looks. Ah, if only looks could kill. The sight of him will scare them out of their wits. The very thought of him scares me out of mine. Sire, I... Oh, who's a pretty boy then? News! What news? Well, I wouldn't give you much for your chances. Words got out about the boy wonder here. What word? Well, haven't you heard? The children all over town are singing. Lancelot's a phony, everyone can see. Stings like a butterfly, floats like a bee. That's it, then? I can assume that we've all had it. Chance would be a fine thing. Now, where's Merlin got to? He said he'd come up with something. Did somebody call? Ah, Merlin, quickly. Oh. Have you got anything? Only the answer to all your problems, that's all. Merlin's magical vanishing fluid. Ah. Ah. One little splash of this, and the splashy becomes instantly invisible. Yeah, that's all right, Merlin. But that's no use to us. 
We don't want Sir Lancelot to become invisible. After all, he's the man they've all come to see. Ah, ah, and see him they shall. And they will advance upon him with murderous intent. Ah, yes, but what they won't see is the other knight sneaking up behind them, invisible, and he'll cleft them to the mazard. What a low-down, filthy, stinking little mind you have. Yes, quite brilliant, really. There's only one snag, though. Who's the other knight going to be? Because there's only Sir Lancelot and... and... oh. My truest, my oldest friend, I know that you will not let me down. Just remember, I've got something on the boil. The royal executioner has had so little practice of late. <laughs> you know me, sire. Anything for a giggle. Splendid! Right. Here goes. It works! It works! <laughs> Do you mean I'm invisible? I can't be seen? Oh, I bet this is going to be fun. <laughs> Hurry up. It's manners to wait till you're asked. <laughs> Merle, please. <laughs> ah, oh, ah, oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> look, call the guardian. We'll have a rehearsal. Guard! Summer, look, attack Sir Lancelot. <laughs> 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 I'm saved! You are a genius! I know, I know! <laughs> Come, Sir Lancelot, it is time we got you on the job. Uh, two binds with but a single thought. <laughs> Yay! Nice! <laughs> hey, oh, I don't like this. I think you should get somebody else. Nonsense. You're going to be all right this afternoon. He's going to be all right tonight as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you've got nothing to worry about. No one will dare to lay a lance on you. Not with Sir Gay standing here. Hmm. I'm over here. <laughs> oh, great. Now, oh, look, look, you've got to have confidence in yourself, boy. Confidence. Look, say to yourself, I am invincible. I am invincible. Come here, I'll jump this. I am the king's champion. I am the king's champion. I am the greatest knight in the land. I am the greatest knight in the land. No man can withstand me. No man can withstand me. I can do anything. I can do anything. I fear nothing. I fear nothing. Here's your horse. Hang about. You're not getting me up on one of those. The only thing you were good at was sitting on that wooden horse. We'll have that then. The knight of the wooden horse. He doesn't need to move. <laughs> what a splendid idea. I'm glad I thought of it. Well, come along. Get him on his wooden horse. You leave that to me. You just go and make the announcement. <laughs> hey, hang about. I still don't understand don't how... Don't you worry about it. Now you just leave it all to me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> well, I hope it's going to work. I can't think of anything that can go wrong. Oh, good. <laughs> <I know. laughs> All set, Sir Gay. Ready when you are, sire. Oh, good. <laughs> well, where are you? Oh, right behind you, sire. Ah, good, yes. Now, remember, I want you to make sure you get them right in the middle of the... Yes, right in the middle of the breastplate. Uh, when, when... What on earth are you looking at me like that for, sire? Merlin! Yeah. I've just thought of something that could go wrong. Such as the invisible fluid wearing off. Well, you thought of that as well. Now it... Hello. <laughs> what are we going to do? Wait a minute. It's easy. It's easy. I've got my bottle of vanishing fluid here. We'll get rid of him. Wait a minute. I've got... Ah! That's it. <laughs> You're going back into the limbo. Close your eyes. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh. You see, it only works once for each person. I'm... Oh. Here. You better do it, your majesticals. Mm. Come on, sir. Ah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Wait a moment. <laughs> yes. I've got it. What?
many more, surely. Uh, no, there's just one more. Sir June the 22nd, the shortest night of the year. <laughs> no problem there, then. <laughs> He's that little chap, isn't he? That's right. Yeah. Tiny little fellow, isn't he? <laughs> He's so small, you know, he can't get up on a proper war horse, can he? <laughs> he has to use a pony. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> a pony! <laughs> Sir Lancelot! Sir Lancelot! Hey, he doesn't seem to be in. What a rotten, swindling cheat! Just wait till I get my hands on him! Stand by me, lads. You must be joking, who? Oh. You can't beat him. Oh. I am your king! Give me your loyalty! I am your ruler! Give me your obedience! Oh. 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 I'm an old man! Give me ten yards! Ah. Listen! I think it's over! Don't be silly, darling. We've only just begun. All that cheering. Do you think I'm champion? Here you are, that lad. Uh, this could make me famous, you know. Don't worry, my sweet. In my book, you'll always be a knight to remember. <laughs> I'm here, Lord Peter. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I say, it's jolly thick, isn't it? Yes. Good gracious me. Reminds me of the night that we solved the Wimbledon treacle murders. Uh, it does indeed, my lord. <clears throat> and uh, as I recollect, it was in similar weather to this that we uh, caught the Bermondsey Kipper Snatcher, my lord. <laughs> You're right. I, um, I, I... Uh, Punter? I'm here, my lord. Oh, there you are. <laughs> have, you, have you any idea where we are? Well, we're on the embankment, my lord, not far from the Wapping Collection. The Wapping Collection? Do you know, one day I really must pop in and see Felicius Crumbit. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the exhibits, my lord? Oh, good lord, no. Dr. Janice Felicius Crumbit, the curator, an old friend of mine. Oh, yes. Oh, Dr. Crumbit, of course, the celebrated anthropologist, Egyptologist and author. Oh, yes, you must remember her book, Raising Your Totem in Tahiti. Yes, I believe I do, my lord. And, of course, another very famous work of hers was A Nibble on the Nile Delta. I believe that was Hannibal on the Nile Delta. Where was it? Oh, well, might be right. OK, chaps, easy does it now. Right, miss. That's lovely. Where do you want it, missus? Right there. Right. Send her it up if you can. Down. That's it. That's it. Down. Wonderful. Oh, what a glorious, glorious day. You've been at it, Dr. Crumbit. The fog's are thick, you can't see your hand in front of you. Oh, I know the weather's beastly, but I mean, what a glorious day for the museum. At last we have him, the mummy of King Ramitapham. <laughs> oh, Kamu Ramu. Pooka Kamu Ramu Kakaka. Oh, Gizzy Kipping. What's all that then? It's an old Egyptian incantation, but just to make sure, I'll do it in English. O oh, Pharaoh who lies there in slumber, for centuries past without number, no curse may we reap for disturbing your sleep. Now up hat and do us a rumba. <laughs> I heard that. Oh, sorry. Do not mock the Pharaohs. Would you invoke the curse of Ramitapham? Oh, well, no, I mean, not if I could help it. Good. Not that I believe there is any curse, but one can't be too careful. OK, lads, open up the lid. Somebody's nicked his bandages. They haven't stolen his bandages. They've stolen him. That body is an imposter! Blimey, he looks like he's been done in. Never mind about him. Where? Oh, where is King 
Ram it up him! <laughs> Evening, boys. What do you fancy? <laughs> what have you got? Oh, it's all on display, dear. Yes, I, I can see that. Oh, um, whatever happened to Fred H. Filey? Oh, he's retired. But as I was always hanging out here, <laughs> he gave me the business. I uh, suppose that you were one of his best customers. Oh, no, Ducky. He was one of my best customers. <laughs> now, what do you have? Uh, w w well, uh, just the two teas for the moment. <coughs> hey, Hunter, this young lady's got a dreadful cough. Yes. Shouldn't you cover your chests up? Oh, that's not me, Ducky. It's him. Huh? Yes. I say, Hunter. There's somebody under the counter. Yes, that's right. You see, earlier on, a gent come up and said to me, could I hold it for him? Uh, hold what? His parrot. His, his, his parrot? Yeah. Then he suddenly ran away and left me hanging on to it. Well, no wonder he's coughing. I think it's this fog. It's getting down his throat. Yes, I expect you're right. Yes. Oh. Dear Punter, this tea tastes absolutely foul. How dare you? Ah, help! Can somebody help me? There's a cry for help, my lord. Yes, I, I think it came from over there. <laughs> and now Mental Spender is broken. <laughs> were, you, were you calling, madam? Yeah, I am looking for a man. You're going the right way about it. Perhaps you could help. Uh, in, in what way? Perhaps you are also looking for a bit. Uh, uh, well, well I, I wasn't, but it's awfully kind of you. Good. Then you look for a bit that way, and I shall look for a bit this way. Oh, uh, wouldn't it be better if we stayed together? No, in this way, we have a better chance of finding him. Finding who, madam? The man I am looking for, Professor Blumus. You see, I was supposed to meet him here, but I think he has lost. Oh, well, now, uh, what did he look like, madam? Well, he was wearing a pith helmet. Oh, I see. Wearing a pith helmet. Yeah, and sunglasses. Pith helmet and sunglasses. Mm, well, he'd obviously read the wrong weather report. <laughs> Nine. He is arriving here from Egypt. But I'm afraid he has lost and injured himself. Oh, well, is there any other way we can recognize him? Yeah, he has a very high-pitched voice. Ah, uh, well, not to worry, he's probably just lost his bearings. Nine, he always spoke that way. Where was this mummy coming from? The uh, home of Sir Henry Abattoir, the great archaeologist. Did Sir Henry give it to you? Oh, yes, indeed, Inspector. About twice a year. I mean, did he give you the mummy? Yes, he left it to me in his will. Found the man. Where are you, Punter? I'm here, my lord. Oh, so you are. Punter, I say, there's somebody over there. Where, my lord? There. A tall, thin chap in a green overcoat with what seems to be a dog. Careful. <laughs> it's a lamppost, my lord. <laughs> Wait, my lord. There's something on the paper. Great. It looks like a body. All covered in bandages. Do you think he's had an accident? Oh, but surely, my lord, they'd hardly let him stay here on the ground. Well, maybe he fell out of the back of an ambulance. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> I think we'd better get him to hospital. Well, well, it may be too late, my lord. He, he seems to be awfully stiff. Gracious. So he does. Uh, um, what, uh, what's that? It's very damp, my lord. It's some sort of helmet. Good heavens. Is it pith? No, merely condensation. <laughs> I see. And who is this young lady? Uh, this is my assistant, Miss Irma Klein. Did you find him, Irma? No, and I lost him in the fog. Lost who? A German professor. He was bringing us a papyrus from Egypt. From Egypt? I don't want to shock you, Fraulein, but could you take a look in here? <gasps> my God! It's the professor! Oh, how awful! It's her bloomers. Good heavens. I thought it was his handkerchief. Where's the ambulance? That's parked right there, sir. Oh. Just put it right there, sir. Thank you. No, please, don't put yourself out, my lord. Oh, all right, Punter. Yeah. Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> I think we've done all we can for him, my lord. Yes, Punter. The rest is up to medical science. Here. Yeah. We've just had a proper look at him. You mean he's dead? Oh, definitely. Oh, we've arrived too late to save him, my lord. By a few thousand years. He's a perishing mummy. Hmm? Oh, Joe, I believe you're right. You know, my lord, I thought he didn't weigh very much. Well, he wouldn't. He's been stuffed. Oh, I see that. I didn't know mummies were stuffed. It's just as well you found out, then. Ah. Perhaps I can help. Perhaps you can. Why didn't the professor come straight here instead of wanting to meet her outside in the fog? Are we talking about her bloomers? Her bloomers? Ah, he was hoping to take them down. Take what down? The hieroglyphics on the needle of the Cleopatra. Thank you. Mm. Yes, all, all right, Punter. Do you think it wise to bring it home, my lord? Well, we couldn't have left it lying on the pavement. I mean, somebody might have uh, tripped over it. <laughs> Do you intend keeping it, my lord? I haven't made my mind up yet, Punter. I, I, I shall be a jiffy. <sighs> Good lord. An Egyptian papyrus. My lord. Panda? How are your hieroglyphics? Oh, greatly improved. I think it must be the new ointment. <laughs> so these two men hired a taxi and took it to this address. That's right, Governor. I heard them give it to the cab driver. Anything else? Yes. They complained about my tea. <laughs> We're not dealing with idiots. Yes. This is what the professor found in Egypt. It, it may well explain to us how he met his death. Oh, yes, he was stabbed. No, no, not the professor. King Ramitopham. It's a funeral poem. Shall I read it to you? Oh, please do. Right. <laughs> King Ramitopham, ruler of the Nile, was bitten in the bull. Rushes by a crocodile. He never did recover. His behavior has been quite odd since he lost the royal ruby off the end of his rod. Anything else? Uh, no, no, it doesn't say lost anything else, no. Uh, no, madam, please. What his lordship means is, is there any more verse? Oh, heaps, yes. <laughs> mm. uh, King Rabbit Upham raised his rod, the crocodile he slew, we found his royal ruby, and we've stuck it on with glue. It's on his royal rod again, for better or for worse, and anyone removing it risks Rabbit Upham's curse. But does it indicate why Herr Blumus was murdered? Oh, it may well do. You see, I had it three weeks ago. Had what, madam? The Pharaoh's sacred scepter, usually known as the royal rod of Ramit Upham. <laughs> How very curious. Why? Well, he only arrived himself this morning. Oh, it came by special delivery. It's solid gold. I have it here. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, now, you will observe. But the ruby is missing from the end. The royal rod of Rabbit Upham. Doesn't that ring a bell to you, punt? It does indeed, my lord. The Montmartre Mummy Exhibition of 1928. Yes, someone broke into that exhibition and removed the ruby from the end of his rod. Replacing it with a walnut wrapped in red toffee paper. Yes, a clumsy device that deceived no one. Oh, within a year the walnut was discovered. And the worldwide hunt began for the ruby. Alas. It was never found. Ah, oh, but the red toffee paper was traced to a German jewel thief who was living in Paris. Nicky Docker, the Deauville door knocker knicker. <laughs> so called because he operated from a fashionable door knocker shop next door to the Folie Bergère. A place famed for its knockers all over you. <laughs> Until it burned down. The, the Folie Bergère? No, no, the door knocker shop. A fact we were not aware of, my lord. Nicky Docker was never found, and neither was the ruby. Some people believe he perished in the flames as a punishment. The curse of Ramit Upham. One cannot ignore it. Ah! It came from in there, my lord. Quick, the lights. Well, if it isn't our old friend, Inspector Bungler. Lord Flame in flimsy, it would be you, wouldn't it? We thought you were the murderer. And I've just been following two men with a mummy all over London. Well, I'm awfully glad you've been introduced, but who screamed? 
Well, it wasn't me. Just a moment. Has anything been disturbed? The sarcophagus! Oh, no. <gasps> Another big... <gasps> so it would seem, my lord. Oh, no! The Princess Nitty Tutty should be in there! Oh, Inspector, don't tell me they've had it! Well, you know their behaviour better than I do, madam. She's in here with Rammy Tupper. <clears throat> Have you identified the second body yet, Inspector? No, but we've identified the first. Professor Blumus? No, Nicky Docker in a false beard. <laughs> Nicky Docker? The Deauville door knocker, Nicker. But if he stole that ruby four years ago, why was he hanging around the museum? Ah, that we don't know. I'm sorry for the delay, my lord, but I've been back to the spot where we found the mummy, and I've discovered these, my lord. Good lord. Those look like the models the ancient Egyptians used to place in their tombs. Yes, my lord. And around one of them was wrapped this piece of paper connected by this piece of elastic, my lord. Oh, Let me see that. Aha. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh. uh, thank you. Uh, would you? Please. <laughs> I've had to hide the ruby. He won't give up his share. The message in sarcophagus will show exactly where. Here we are, my lord. Oh, oh, good punter. Yes. I, King Ramit Upham, resting in my box, accompanied as ever by my favourite ass and ox. These. But if in my sarcophagus something doesn't fit, then move my ass... Uh, ass, my lord. Oh. <laughs> then move my ass, ass right out of it and fill it up with grit. They threw his ass out of it. Yes, but they didn't fill it up with grit. Well, uh, no visible apertures. <laughs> but what is grit? Well, stones. Exactly. And so is a ruby. I shall take these oxen and have a mix with. Good day to you all. Oh, uh, what a pity he didn't wait. There's more to come. <laughs> but then put in my oxens. Oxens, now. Now, that's a double plural. Ah, there may be a hidden meaning. <laughs> then put in my oxens the yoke around their necks to keep them tightly in their place and do away with sex. <laughs> An anagram, my lord. Precisely, punter. <laughs> well, that's the key word, punter. If in my sarcophagus... Something doesn't fit. Then move my ass right uh, out... Ass, my lord. Move my ass right out of it. And fill it up with grit. <coughs> well... <coughs> um, that's my ass out of it, my lord. Yes, well, if you get your head out of it, I'll be able to see the back. Oh, do you beg your pardon, my lord. Oh, no. Uh, please, my lord, excuse me. We next add grit. Grit. Yeah, now what have we got? Uh, try coughing, my lord. <laughs> May I try it, my lord? Try what? Coughing, my lord. What? Is it? <laughs> yes, well, what does that leave us? R-P-A-R-T-O. Ah! Parrot! Co the coughing parrot! The coughing parrot at the coffee store. I ain't got him. Well, where is he? I took him up the lost property office. Oh. Good afternoon. We're looking for a lost parrot. Can you describe it? No, uh, how many lost parrots do you have? I've got 15. <laughs> well, the, the, the parrot we're looking for has a rather nasty cough. Not anymore, it hasn't. Oh, hasn't he? No, no. give it some cough mixture and cure it. Yes, well, look, the, the one you gave the cough mixture to is the one we're after. Fifteen, they're all the same to me, Paris. I don't know which one that was now. Yes, surely you must keep some sort of medical records. Oh, yes, we do. But the monkey got loose and pulled them all off the cage. Oh, so you have a monkey back there. You haven't lost one, have you? No. Oh, pity I was having to get shot of it. He's created nothing but chaos back there. Now, look, look, please. The parrot we want was brought in by a Miss Frieda H. Filey. Yes, a, a coffee stall keeper. <laughs> that won't help, will it? 
But surely you put labels on the cages? Yes, I do, but the bloody monkeys pull them off and all. He's pulling things off everything back there. And who say that? Give us a kiss. That's a parrot called Charlie. God knows what the monkey's done to him. <laughs> uh, I wonder if we might go inside and have a look. In there? Yes. Barney. Yes, yes. Help yourself. And, uh, I'll put these up before you go in there. Why? Is the roof leaking? No, but the monkey is. He's up in the rafters. <laughs> coffin? Carrot. Well, didn't they tell you? No, they did not. Where's your coffin? On the coffee stall. It sounds most unhygienic. <laughs> so what are you doing there, Fallen? Oh, I have broken my suspender again. Oh, heavens above. Yes, I know, but I'm on duty. <laughs> Have you noticed that no punter? Yes, my lord. It was taped to its tail feathers. <clears throat> Here we are. Perry Pickers after me. I think I know his game. But Ramit Upham put the ruby in his wife's name. Perry Picker, the Peckham parrot stuffer. Precisely, my lord. His practice was to call at the houses of people whose parrots had recently passed away, posing as a taxidermist. Whereupon he would offer to stuff them. Hmm. At a reduced rate. Carrying a sample of his handiwork. Once in the house, he would actually remove the stuffing from the parrot and replace it with their valuables. Y it, that may explain where the ruby's been these past years. In a stuffed parrot in Peckham. Precisely, my lord. <laughs> and the last line of this message may indicate where it can be found at present. Ramit Upham put the ruby in his wife's name. Yeah. I hope his wife's name's not Polly. <laughs> ah! The, uh... Inspector has removed the second victim. He has been identified as a man by the name of Perry Picker. Oh, so he's dead as well. Apparently there were no signs of violence on him. And now perhaps you can tell us the name of Rabbit Upham's wife. Nosha Rollmop. <laughs> Nosha Rollmop. Yes. Or, or to give her her full title, the Lady Nefertiti Nosha Rollmop of Nineveh. <laughs> We've solved the anagram. Yes, it's I N in ham roll. In teapot. On Frida Filey's oven. Yeah. Huh. <clears throat> I say, Punter, this door's locked. Tell him a lot. <clears throat> Give me the nearest taxi rank. But that's no good. Who's going to let us out? With any luck, madam, from the taxi driver. Taxi! Taxi! Hello, dear. I need something urgently. Oh, well, it's up the road, dear. Oh, I'm wanting your teapot. Certainly not. I'm willing to buy it from you. Oh, well, that's different. Two pounds. <laughs> Funny lady. Who was that girl? It's Irma Klein. I've been following her. You should join us. We've got a taxi. Well, what's she up to? She heard us doing a riddle. It's in the teapot. In that case, thank God I got rid of it. <laughs> So, it was you, Irma. Oh, don't try to stop me. I am returning the ruby. Returning the ruby? I am the niece of Nicky Docker, and since he stole it, our family have had nothing but misfortune. The curse of Ramit Upham. The curse <laughs> and verse. He came here disguised as her bloomers to get the ruby from the Peckham Parrot stuffer who was minding it for him. But the Peckham Parrot stuffer stabbed him and stuffed him in that sarcophagus. But who murdered the Peckham Parrot stuffer? That is one mystery I shall leave you to serve. And when I have returned this ruby, I am leaving England forever. Oh, mighty Rami Tupin, I return your ruby. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> we have it here. I think you will find that what you have there is a walnut wrapped in red toffee paper! <laughs> and when I finish this toffee, Fräulein, I shall arrest you for the murder of Perry Picker. Oh. <laughs> I see they found Irma not guilty then, Punter. Yes, my lord. 
Well, Nicky Docker knew that Perry Picker would not willingly part with the ruby. Oh, so he smeared a slow-acting poison on the parrot's beak, then took it to Peckham, where it pecked poor Perry Picker and poisoned him, punter. Exactly, my lord. <laughs> but before the poison could take effect, Nicky Docker waylaid Perry Picker in the fog and stabbed him. That's right. Then Perry Picker hid in the sarcophagus where the poison overtook him. Precisely, my lord. You know, there's only one thing that puzzles me, punter. Was my lord? Well, if that parrot had a poison beak, why didn't it poison itself? Well, the poison comes from a very rare plant in South America, my lord. To most living creatures, it's absolutely fatal. But parrots are immune to it. Precisely, my lord. It merely makes them cough. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just a touch, Mrs. B. Getting a bit tricky, isn't it, Mr. C? If you ask me, well, I... I'm not asking you, girl. This is something only a man can understand. Quite right, Mr. C. Uh, forward, as he. She'll be wearing striped socks next. You keep quiet, girl, and get on with your work. And let Mr. C get on with his deliberations. Keep the boy fresh. Thank you, Mrs. B. Well, Mr. C? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. There are too many imponderables. Imponderables? Oh, you do have some lovely words, Mr. C. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we had some last night when he chipped over the cat. You keep quiet, madam, or you'll get that cucumber around your lug hole. Now then, Mr. C, put us out of our misery. What do you think ought to be done? Well, taking one thing with another, considering every aspect and weighing up all the factors involved... I think we should skip the first two races and go for Captain Dick in the third. But what about the war? War? What war? You know, the Kaiser and the German army and all that. Everyone says it's going to be a war. Everyone? Well, Albert the Butcher's boy. <laughs> Silly girl. You want to forget about Albert and listen to your elders and betters. Mr C has got it up here. <laughs> that ain't where Albert's got it. <laughs> I'm dreadfully sorry. I thought you were Lily. Oh, I would have had her that time too, I bet. Oh, oh. <laughs> I've been practicing little short jumps all the morning. <laughs> ah, the morning paper. Thank you, Clotson. <laughs> ah, yes. No doubt about it. <laughs> There's going to be a war, all right. I have it on the highest authority. From the chief of the general staff? No, from Albert, the butcher's boy. <laughs> it dines, Clotson. Kaiser Wilhelm reviews the troops. German army manoeuvres on the Belgian border. Oh, but surely they wouldn't dare, sir. They must know what would happen once the British lion gets his tail up. Ah, uh, you mark my words, Clotson. There's nothing the Kaiser would like better than to get his hand on a bit of British tail. <laughs> but we'll be ready for them, eh? Yes, I'll get in touch with the war office and see what they can offer me. A splendid idea, sir. Why don't you call them right away on the telephonic communicator? Ah, <coughs> there you go. Hello, War Office, Sir Harry Bulgin Blackman. Oh, sir. Oh, hello there, War Office, no. Sir Harry Bulgin. Hello there, no. War Office, sir. Sir, Harry. <laughs> sir Harry Bulgin Plunger. What do you mean, number, please? I haven't got a number. I'm a major general, not a dash comic. War Office? Well, that hasn't got a number either, has it? It's that big building on the right as you go down Whitehall. Two tin soldiers outside and a pile of horse manure on the pavement. Oh, I can't be bothered. I'll send them a postcard. Damn stupid invention, that Clodson. <laughs> It'll never take the place of the cleft stick. <laughs> well, I shall just go round to the war office and offer my services. Lay out my dress uniform, will you, Clodson? And get the footman to sharpen my spurs. We don't have a footman anymore, sir. They don't last very long since Miss Virginia has insisted on giving them night classes. <laughs> Claims she was improving their minds. <laughs> 
Be that as it may, there wasn't one of them could lift a scuttle of coal the next morning. <laughs> yes, nuisance, Dodson. Well, get another footman, will you? I can't go to war with blunt spurs. Very good, sir. Ugh. Equal rights for women. All men are swines. Down with the trousered tyrants. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, Clodson. Good morning, Miss Virginia. What the place Sorry, is Daddy, haven't time to explain. Just popped in to tell Clodson I borrowed tea in the tweenie for a while. Uh, yes, Miss Virginia. Now, you behave yourself, do you hear? Yes, Mr. Clodson. We don't want any trouble. No, Mr. Clodson. And make sure you're back in time to scrub those floors before dinner. Yes, Mr. Clodson. Now, listen here, oh, my God. stop, Daddy. We've got a terribly busy day ahead. Just popping over to Buckingham Palace, where I shall make the supreme gesture. You mean? Yes. I shall chain Teeny to the railings. But, Miss Virginia... Enough. Forward, Teeny. It's not a bit like Virginia. Aye, but maybe now we can safely advertise for another footman. Down with trousers, up with skirts. Ah, that's more like it. She hasn't changed a bit, you know. <laughs> now then, let's see. We'll put four bags in the pantry for the general, and the rest can go into my private stock. But that's Aldi, Mrs. Bridges. The paper says it wasn't patriotic to do Aldi. Bless your girl, that ain't Aldi. We's merely looking after our substance, like it says in the good book. Ain't you never heard of the white virgins? Not in this house. <laughs> <laughs> it was dreadful, Peter. Waist deep in mud. Those damn guns bang, bang, banging away. The screams of the horses, the groans of the men, the filth, the degradation, the suffering. I tell you, Peter, to my dying day, I shall never forget those three days of manoeuvres on Salisbury Plain. <laughs> I know. I know, my boy. War is hell. But remember, you are a Belgian plunger. And now that I have this key position on the general staff... It came through, then? Well, uh, yes, it came through. As from today, I'm general officer in charge of bootlaces and putties. Is that good? Good? It's absolutely vital, my dear boy. <laughs> As Napoleon said, an army marches on its bootlaces. I wouldn't be at all surprised they don't give me a knighthood. But you've already got a knighthood. Have I? Forgive the intrusion, sir. I thought you would like to interview the new footman. Oh, good idea, Clotha, yes. Wheel him in. Good morning, Herr General. Footman first class Otto Klinger for duty reporting and at your service himself is pleasing. Klinger? Uh, Klinger? Otto Klinger? You're not some kind of dashed Bosch, I'll... Ach, Gott in Himmel, nein, Your Excellency! <laughs> I am in Switzerland, geboren. From where is coming the big cheese and the clock's cuckoo. <laughs> but I am now since long time in England living. Indeed, I am out taking my citizen papers and getting myself neutralized. Oh, you poor man. Was it painful? I think he means naturalized, miss. Thank heavens. This dreadful war has deprived us of so much already. Yeah, but I am now jolly fine English working chap, Koblimi. Oh. Play up Tittenham hotspots. God straff the king. Oh, well, that's yes, good. I thought for one moment that you were one of those damn German spies, you know. Because I couldn't have you here, you see. If you were uh, one of those German spies, you're not. I'll. Ah, nicht me, Your Excellency. You have my word as an English gentle bloke. Ah, good, good, good. Yeah. Because I have this very important and highly secret post in the war cabinet, you know. I'm in charge of bootlaces and putties. Bootlaces and putties. What are you writing it down for? I am studying to English my improve. Oh, excellent. I find that highly satisfactory. You're hired. Thank you. Uh, I think that's someone at the front door, sir. If the Herr General will permit. A good man, that Clodson. I say, do you think he can sharpen spurs? I think he'll do anything to oblige. Anything? Your Excellence, Madame la Vicomtesse de la Zizi Pompom. Lottie, Lottie, little Lottie Lovell. How you been your handy old goat? How about a nice cup of Rosie Lee? There's also Rosie Lee. She means tea. Yes, that's right. Hot and strong, the way I like everything. <laughs> Very well, madam. Sit down. Well, Lottie, what have you been up to? 
since you ran off with my footman, Starkers. Well, now, let me see. Uh, well, there was this Bedouin chief in Morocco. Uh, Mind you, Bulgy, I don't recommend the Sahara life ducks. Uh, that sand gets everywhere. <laughs> and then, a couple of weeks ago, I thought I had it made. I got this royal geezer lined up. Yes, he was married, mind you, but promised me he'd get a divorce. Swore it with his hand on his coronet, he did. Lottie said, you and me are going to get hitched the minute I get back from Sarah Jaliva. As sure as my name is Archduke Ferdinand. But I waited for him in Paris and he didn't turn up. Don't you read the newspapers? Archduke Ferdinand was shot in the Balkans. God help us. Just swear he didn't turn up. I do like a man with all his faculties. I see. So now you've come back to me. Well, who else would I come back in my hour of need but back to my fiancé? 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 You have a fiancé? Yes, you, silly. Me? Yes, don't you remember? When I was here three years ago, you proposed to me and I accepted. Yeah, but dash it all, Lottie. You did run off with the footman and you've married three other chaps since then. Well, a girl's got to do something to pass the time, but the fact still remains we never formally broke off our engagement. So, what do you say? <laughs> oh, my lucky! Oh, my bulgy! Oh, my God! Now, how are we off for bootlaces? There is a spare pair in the left-hand drawer of your dressing table, sir. Uh, well, that'll do for a start. And it still leaves me a bit short. How many pairs do you need, sir? Fifty million. Cobblers. <laughs> Don't be impertinent, man. No, I meant that I would have to send Lily around all the cobblers in the neighborhood. Oh, no, no time for that, Clotson. It'll take days, you see. The, um, <clears throat> the British Expeditionary Force leaves for France tomorrow. 250,000 men, Clutton. The old contemptibles the Kaiser calls them. <laughs> but we'll show him, eh? If only we can get hold of 50 million pairs of bootlaces. 50 million pairs of bootlaces for 250,000 men sounds a little excessive, sir. Well, Clutton, if they look sloppy, they'll fight sloppy. <laughs> My plan is that each man shall carry 200 spare pairs of bootlaces in his knapsack. <laughs> it's little details like this that could win the war for us, Clutton. If only we can get hold of the bootlaces. Well, I may be able to assist you, sir, if you will allow me a little time to make inquiries. Ah, uh, good man, Clausen. Uh, and uh, send up young Lily with the uh, tea, will you? Very good, sir. Uh, top secret. I'll guard you with my life. But try to trip me up with you, you boss swine. Right, take that. Right. Oh, but, uh, I say, Ted, do try and be a bit more careful where you stick that thing. Willie, why aren't you off to France with the old contemptibles? Ah, yes, well, I thought I'd stay here with the young contemptibles. What sort of talk is this for a serving officer? You should have thought of this, my lad, when I bought your commission for you four years ago. I say, you wouldn't like to buy it back, would you? You can have it for half price. <laughs> anyway, nobody said anything about fighting. I mean, I didn't mind the army in peacetime. It was all balls. Eh? And banquets and parties and going out with devs and all that. Then someone goes and starts a jolly old war and spoils it all. It's not fair. Rejoin your regiment this instant, sir, or I'll cut you off without a shilling. All right, Peter, you win. But I warn you, if I get killed in battle, I, I shall never speak to you again. <laughs> In himmel. No, it's Lily. Oh, look, pigeons. Pigeons? What pigeons? We are pigeons. Who's pigeons? <laughs> no, silly. In that basket. For well, the one that says made in Berlin. Oh, those pigeons. Ah, oh, well, yeah. It's my hobby. <laughs> yeah. Come, Fritzi. Time to go walkies. <laughs> well, what are you doing with that piece of paper? It's very clean pigeon. Does not want to make notice. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were Lily. No, Herr General. It's me, the footsman, Klenger. <laughs> well, I really did it, Dr. Klenger, then, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the chief, good lad. Put it down over there, will you? Yeah, General. <laughs> Top secret. Oh, there it is. I was wondering where I put it. Good man, Klinger. I wouldn't want this to get into the wrong hands, you know, eh? <laughs> All right, run along, then. Yes, here, General. <clears throat> I say, pay for the most dreadful bad luck. I'm afraid I've broken my jolly old arm, so I can't go off to war tomorrow. Oh, you poor boy. Have a cup of tea. Oh, thank you, Peter. <laughs> you insolent young pup. Get off to war this instant or I'll have your pips on toast for breakfast. Oh, belly button. And when I was his age, I was much older. Oh, hello, Baldy. Oh, Lottie, come and sit on my knee and tell me what a good girl you've been. Now you behave yourself. I'm a respectable engaged lady. So when are we going to get married, eh? No, I think we ought to wait a bit. After all, they say these wartime marriages never last. And besides, I'm so busy with my war work. What war work? Well, helping poor soldiers in trouble. I've got one outside now. Jock! <laughs> What's wrong with him? He's got his spawn in a twist. I'll just take him upstairs and straighten it out. See you later, now. Oh, good Lottie. Please, uh, oh, I suppose somebody's got to do it. Brave fellows, these jocks. Uh, Sporran in a twist. <sighs> Must be awfully painful, then. Still, Lottie's a good girl. Uh, she'll handle it. Uh, Lottie. <laughs> Top secret. Oh God, give him good water, man. Now, Rottie. <laughs> what have you got there, Clanger? It's a picture postcard I am sending to my motor. Why is it marked top secret? I don't want the postman to read it. <laughs> Excuse me. Funny man, that. Funny is as funny does. What does that mean, Mrs. B? I don't know, Mr. C. I wasn't listening. Kom runter, runter, geh unter den Lindenstraße. Terribly sorry, I thought you were Lily. Why, I'm Lily, sir. Eh? Oh, this is a dreadful war. It's been going on for so long. <laughs> oh, dear. Are you all right, sir? Eh? Oh. <laughs> oh <no. laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Such a willing child. <laughs> She's a lovely girl. <laughs> I know. I'll get her when she comes back for the tray. I've <laughs> 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 sworn I poured myself a cup there. <laughs> 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 Excellent. There we are. Losing my faculties. I really have to. Oh, now I dropped the knife! Willie! Hello, Pedro. Is there a 
Johnny Jam. <laughs> Been off fighting months ago. Ah, yes, well, you see, I lost my travel warrant and I thought it might be in here. And is it? I don't know, I haven't looked yet. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Willie. Any luck with your travel warrant yet? Yes, I still haven't found it. <laughs> oh, this is all too much for me. I would have hoped that at least one of my family would have been out at the front. Well, now you've come to mention it. Oh, hello, Baldy. Oh, Virginia, I know you're a bulging plunger, but that's taking the family name a bit too far. In wartime, we must increase our productivity. Who said that, Lloyd George? No, Albert the Butcher's boy. <laughs> Get off to the war this instant! Right ho, Peter, just as soon as I finish blankering my tennis. Have you go. Oh, Lottie, little Lottie. Oh, come behind the city and make an old man very happy. Oh, now, now, you don't want to get excited. I do, I do, I do want to get excited. Oh, when do we get married? Oh, now, uh, let me see. Um, I can fit you in 3rd of March, 1921. Oh, no. I'll leave you to make the arrangements. But please, Lottie, can't I have a little bit on account? No, you can't have a bit on account. I'm far too busy with my war work. I've got this poor Norwegian sailor outside who hasn't had a meal for days. I'll just take him upstairs and give him one. Sven! <laughs> See you later. Now, don't forget, 3rd of March, 1921. Come, <laughs> mein Liebchen, Pitchens, come. Mr. Clanger, don't worry, I'll take good care of them. But yeah, but where are they? They're all tucked up nice and warm. There we are now, look. Lovely, broiled in bacon. Bacon! Bacon! Donner and Blitzen! Bacon! <laughs> I don't look chewy. <laughs> Is having terrible trouble with his, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? So I'll just take him upstairs the back way so as not to disturb the general. Very good, madam, yes. Oh, and uh, you might send up a bottle of champagne and a bowl of curry. Yes, I'll do it right away, madam. <laughs> well, if she's gonna muck about with his, what do you call it, he'll need more than a bowl of curry. Honest swark and melly ponce. I will not have that kind of language in my kitchen, Mr. C. <laughs> Belgian plunger residence. You see, your name is Kaiser, and you're talking from a telephone box in Berlin. You want us to pay for the charges? Well, just a moment. Klanger, it's for you. Yeah. I've told you before about taking calls at work. My patrons are lost. I mean, no, sir, Hello? Jawohl, your majesty. Jawohl, your majesty. Hand away, your majesty. Who is that? It was my dear sainted Mota. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I thought... Hello, Peter. Willie, why aren't you out fighting at the front, you cowardly custard? Quiet, quiet, Peter. I shall now reveal all. Wh oh, my God. You're one of those as well. No, no, no. The reason that I'm not out at the front is that I'm working for counterintelligence. Gad! So my son is a man, after all. <laughs> yeah. oh. No, 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 there's no time for that now, Peter. Listen, listen. I have reason to believe that your footman, Klanger, is a German spy. Good gracious me. Have you any proof? Nothing that would stand up in a court of law, but I just heard him talking to Kaiser Wilhelm. Hark! Then down to the basement. We must apprehend him immediately. <laughs> Hey, hey. Oh. Sorry, I thought you were Lily, Master Willie. <laughs> Where's Klinger? He's a German spy. Klinger? Never. I just heard him talking to the Kaiser. I knew he was a wrong one. Well, where is he? We must find him. I've just sent him up to Madam's room with a bottle of champagne and a bowl of curry. Ah, well, quick. Arm yourselves, then off to Madam's room. Come on, girl. Take yourselves up. Up you go, quick. Stand by to jump him as he comes through the door. Get your weapons ready. We know you're in there. Come out, you foreign devil. It's all over. It's all over. It's the armistice. Armistice? Well, is it official? Yes. Straight from Alva the Butcher's boy. Oh.
beg your pardon? I say, I'm sorry to trouble you, but do you think you could help me? I may as well tell you now. I make it a point never to give money to strange men in bushes. Good gracious me, my dear fellow. <laughs> it's not your money I'm after. You're not in the household cavalry by any chance. <laughs> gracious me, no. Nothing like that. Ah, well. As long as it isn't money, what can I do for you? <laughs> well, it's such a trivial matter, I hardly like to bother you with Come it. Come along, man, out with it. Well, have you at all about your person the eye tooth of a hippopotamus, a packet of ants' eggs, and a long buff envelope? The eye tooth of a hippopotamus, a, a packet of ants' eggs? And a long buff envelope. What on earth do you want them for? <laughs> well, it's such a long story. Nevertheless, I would like to hear it. Oh, right ho then. Are you sitting comfortably? Yes. Good, then I'll begin. <laughs> it all happened a long time ago at the annual general meeting of Bugs. Bugs? Yes, B-U-G-S. The Bermondsey Universal Geographical Society. In the chair was Lord Gropefinger, the well-known explorer. And so, to sum up, it has not been a good year for Bugs. The expedition which we sent off to find the true source of the Nile got on the wrong ship at Dover and is now working its way back on a tram steamer from Whitley Bay. Shame! Thank you, madam, it is indeed. And our Arctic Circle mapping survey all came down with chillblains three miles north of Watford. The silver collection on the door tonight has amounted to just under three half pence. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. And unless something is done, and soon, who knows where we shall be tomorrow? Here, here. Half of us don't even know where we are today. Oh, yes, <laughs> I now yield the floor to uh, Lady Airy Fairy, the well-known society sport. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, Mr. Chairman, it's not good enough, is it? A fine geographical society this is, where even the treasurer gets lost between here and the bus stop. But well, what do you suggest we do about it? Well, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? All we have to do is something absolutely ripping and spiffing and jolly exciting and top hole to boldly go where no man has been before sort of thing. <laughs> well, that lets Lady Mary out, eh? <laughs> On the contrary, I suggest we go where man has gone before. Oh, it's all right. She's back in again. Hecla, <laughs> who are you, sir? My name is Stanley, the well-known foreign correspondent. <laughs> you may remember that some five years ago, one of our leading explorers went into the African jungle and has never been heard of since. I think you all know... I think the five of you know to whom I am referring. Ah, Dr. Pavingstone, I presume. I wish you hadn't said that. I was going to use that line later. <laughs> However, my newspaper is prepared to finance an expedition to look for the missing doctor, and I hope that your society well, give me what I'm looking for, eh? <laughs> Any volunteers? Well, you can have me for a start. <laughs> uh, but let's get the expedition organized first. Really, Stanley, I meant I shall come with you on the expedition. What, you? A woman in the jungle with nature at its rawest alone? It's unheard of. But I shan't be alone. I'll be with you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Any more volunteers? No? Good. We leave tomorrow. No, no, no. no just a minute, yeah. please. I suggest you take with you our guest speaker for this evening, a great white hunter whose name is a byword for trustworthiness and reliability. Mm -hmm. Well, where is he? He hasn't turned up yet. <laughs> How do you do, sir? What a coincidence. May I present that great white hunter, the Honourable Richard Darcy. Oh, how do you do? Uh, how do you do, Darcy, old chap? How do you do? M my friends call me Elephant Dick. Really? May I ask why? I don't know. I'm a butterfly man myself. <laughs> Perhaps it's because I've got a very long memory. <laughs> Mr. Darcy, we have a job for you. Lady Mary and Mr. Stanley are off to Africa tomorrow to search for a great man who has been missing for five years. Dr. Pavingstone, I presume. <laughs> Cut it out, will you? That's my line. Well, with all your attributes, I think there is every chance that the three of you can make it together. Yes, and we might find Dr. Pavingstone as well. Then I shall lead you. 
I will guide you through the impenetrable forests of the Congo, through the trackless wastes of the Kalahari Desert, and through the torturous passes of the Nagoro Mountains. Jolly good. Then we'll meet you tomorrow morning at the boat train at Victoria Station. Oh, there's just one thing. What then? How do I get to Victoria? <laughs> Aye, I go. I come on. Aye, I go. I be son. Right, we'll camp here. Why here? Because my feet are killing me. <laughs> Call off the baggage. Oi, Lady Mary. Drop them. No, no, the baggage. Dump it. We're staying here for tonight. Well, can you possibly tell us where we are? Exactly where we are. Just one second. Now, do you know the children are free? We're lost. Oh, dear, this whole expedition has been a disaster from the beginning. 1480 porters and they all deserted on the first day. A lot of explorers lose their porters on the first day. Not in Victoria. Well, as far as I can see it, there's only three things we can do. We can settle here and wait until we're rescued. Or we can press on until we drop from exhaustion. Or we can ask that chap over there. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, hello, eh? Uh, guten Tag. Come on, Saba. Could be a bit tricky, this. Yes, well, why don't you try uh, a pigeon English? Good idea. <laughs> Stand aside, please. please. Greetings, fella. Uh, me fella, him fella, and her fella. Uh, come along, jungle fella, looking for old fella, long time no see any fella. You savvy? Ah, Dr. Pavingstone, I presume. <laughs> Great spit. Everybody wants to get in on the act. Do you know where he is, or don't you? Certainly. Where? Uh, just round the next bend in the trail. The large hut on the left. You can't miss it. Oh, he can. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Mazel tov. <laughs> Stand back, Darcy. This is my historic moment. Oh. <laughs> Lady Teasel, by all that's wonderful. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, you can hardly expect me to say Dr. Pavingstone, I presume, because everybody else has said that. <laughs> so there's one phrase you'll not be getting from me. You are Dr. Pavingstone, I presume. Oh, damn, no, I've said it. Is it, is it him? Who oh, is it him? Yes, are you him? Am I who him? Oh, poor chap, his mind's gone. Whose mind's gone? Well, you see, he's five years alone in the jungle, away from civilization. you see. It's bound to affect the memory. What are you talking about? There's nothing wrong with my memory. It's you that's mad. <laughs> Look at that fellow there. Why is he dressed so funny? <laughs> he's dressed so funny because he's a woman. A woman? By God. So it is. Look. Pink booties. Yes, and I'm also wearing the dinkiest little pair of pink knickers. Steady on, girl. It didn't take him a week to get over the boots. Oh, remarkable. Well, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, we, we've come to take you back to civilization. Oh, no, that won't be possible, I'm afraid. You see, just after I got here, I had a little difference of opinion with the local witch doctor. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute, please. Don't tell me that he put a spell on you. Very well, I won't. So what happened? I'll tell her. He put a spell on me. Just one moment, sir. These two may believe your ridiculous story, but not me. <laughs> I've been to Africa before. They called me Elephant Dick. Oh, he put a spell on you, too. <laughs> Spells? They're a lot of superstitious claptrap. Oh, I don't know. I can't help thinking there might be something in it. Well, now that you're here, would you care for some lunch? Oh! 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 It's not too bad once you get used to it. And of course, it's very useful about the house. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But of course, you can see why my returning to England is quite out of the question. Herbert, you just can't give up like this. I won't let you. Come back to London with me, and I'll take you straight to Harley Street, and we can have it off. But I thought you lived in Kensington. The tail. I was talking about having it removed, surgically. It won't do any good, my dear. I've tried it, and the tail grew again within a couple of hours. No, a spell is a spell. What about lifting it? Oh, very well, if it pleases you. No, I meant lifting the spell. If it is a spell, it may be just a figment of your imagination. What's that? A figment of your imagination. A figment of my imagination, indeed. You haven't had to live with it all these years. Every night, the same terrible decision to make. Do I sleep with it under the blanket and tickle myself to death? Or do I sleep with it hanging out over the edge of the bed for the cat to play with? Oh, there must be something we can do. Right, leave this to me. This witch doctor, what's his name? You're a nutter. There's no need to be like that. Oh, no, that's his name. You're a nutter. Oh, well, summon him to our presence. Very well. But I think you're making a big mistake. Now, let me see. What's his number? There we are. Ah. Mogabutu, bang, thump, wallop, clop. <laughs> I'm sorry, he's engaged. I'll try again later on. There's no need. I'll go and see him myself. No, 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 come back here. Oh, dear. I shouldn't have let him go. I don't know. He's a big lad. After all, they don't call him Elephant Dick for nothing, do they? Well, they do, actually. Oh, oh yes. Well, I'm sure he can look after himself. Oh, no, he can't. He could be in deadly peril. He needs your support. Oh, I don't think it would fit him. Go before it is too late. Oh, all right. If it'll make you feel any better. Oh, clever. I beg your pardon. Well, they've gone, the both of them, leaving just the two of us alone together. Oh, yes, well, I shouldn't worry. They won't be too long. Well, then we haven't got much time, have we? Haven't got much time for what? Well, we're getting on with it. Oh, that's very true. Right. We'll get at it, shall we? <laughs> you wash, and I'll wipe. Oh, listen! What? Can't you hear it? Hear what? The call! The wild, primeval call of nature! That's Mabel! Mabel? Yes, she's a female gorilla. <laughs> Not tonight, Mabel! I've got visitors! <laughs> I'll be like that. <laughs> Oh, very well. I'll see you on Friday at the Coconut Grove. <laughs> and be sure to cut your fingernails. <laughs> now we can get on with it. Oh. <laughs> Hear me, Mabel. Oh, no, not Mabel. Me calling to you. You, Taz, and me, Jane. No, no. You, Lady Mary. Me, Dr. Pavingstone. <laughs> ha, Mabel. Ha! Gorilla! Me, white woman! Are you stupid? Me, you, woman. Oh. Me, man. By George, he's got it! I think he's got it! A real woman. Yes. A real, live, warm, willing woman to look after you, to tend to your basic needs. What can that female gorilla do that I can't do better? She keeps me in bananas. Oh, man does not live on bananas alone. No, he needs all the other little things that only a woman can do. You're right. Oh, how blind I've been all these years. The wanting and the needing and the not being able. The aching and the pain of having to do without. And then you're here. And suddenly, there's hope. And the chance to be as other men. If only... If only you could... No, no, I couldn't ask you. Oh, ask me! But we hardly know each other. Ask me! Ask me! I've tried doing it for myself, but I just can't seem to get the hang of it. Only a woman can put me out of my misery. Oh, ask me! Ask me! Ask me! Every time I get my hands on it, I get all flustered and my eyes go funny. Oh, it's not very long, I'm afraid. But I'm sure you'll fix that. Oh, I will. I will. I will. Right. 
Do you think you could finish this knitting for me? <laughs> Ah, uh, Doctor, you're an otter, I presume? At your service. And what appears to be the trouble? They call me Elephant Dick. Indeed. Well, that is easily remedied. <laughs> Pack that up for a start. You're dealing with an old African hand. It's the only kind I've got. <laughs> Don't you bandy words with me. I have come here to put a stop to your naughty doings. And if you cast any more spells, I... You shall what? Hide, 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 hide. Well, if ever you come to the Topmerton Working Men's Club... Yes? I shall have you blackballed. <laughs> no comment. What have you done to Dr. Favingstone? Ah, you mean Kangawunga? Yes, that's it. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Kangawunga, it is a process by which I can cause monkey's tails to grow on human beings. Ah. <laughs> uh, well, that sounds uh, very interesting, that. Uh, Kangawunga, how do you spell that? K A N G A W W. Ah! Where are you, Darcy? Darcy, where are you? Ahoy! Elephant Dick! I'm here, Dick! Here, Dick! Here, Dick! Oh, uh, please, uh, don't mind me. I'm looking for Dick. <laughs> no! I didn't mean. No, please! Oh, where can those two be? They've been gone for such a long time. Oh, my dear, the jungle is a terrible place. We may never see either of them again. Strength! I've been in some nasty spots in my life, but that was a real shocker. A bloody great female gorilla it was. One minute I was on the jungle trail, and the next minute I was halfway up a gum tree with this hairy great brute peeling all my clothes off. That would be Mabel. She probably thought you were a banana. She's very partial to a little fruit. Oh, that reminds me. Where is Elephant Dick? Did somebody call? Good man, you made it. Did you see the witch doctor? Yes, I did. And I said to him, I said, the great white queen across the water is not amused, I said. She will send many warriors with fire sticks to punish you, I said. And what did the witch doctor say? Get knotted, he said. <laughs> Well, I could fix him up with Mabel's sister. Well, he's not going to make a monkey out of me. There must be a way to beat the witch doctor. Yes, there is. You have a plan. Yes, I always believe in fighting your enemy using his own weapons. See if you can raise your spooky friend on that thing over there. Ask him if he'd like to see an exhibition. Oh! Of white man's magic. You never give up, do you? Now, let's work some magic of our own. I want a nail, some, uh, some uh, a saw, a hammer, wood, anything like this. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> What a terrible night! Do you think he'll come? He'd have to be out of his mind to walk through that. Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, sorry if I've startled you. But it was such a horrible evening, I decided to fly. Not at all, not at all. Delighted you could come. I hope I'm not late. Uh, uh, no, would you blow out the house lights? <laughs> Good evening and welcome. We proudly present the great Stanley in White Man's Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Are we ready? Thank you very much. And now I 
shall produce from thin air a bouquet of jungle flowers. Are you ready? Oh, ah. you're right, you're right. Thank you. And now, there's nothing up my sleeve. I will change those jungle flowers into a little bunny rabbit. Are you ready, please? <laughs> oh, ah! What happened to the rabbit? Oh, you better walk the snake. Ah! You're a right little killjoy, you are, aren't you? Well, <laughs> what do you think of it so far? Rubbish! <laughs> so that's where they got it from. <laughs> I'm now coming down to the auditorium. If you produce any object you care to from your pocket, my lady assistant will guess what it is without even looking or without my telling her. Thank you. Are you ready, Lady Mary? Oh, any time. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is a very interesting object here. <clears throat> You'll get this in no time. <laughs> it's a... Watch what you're saying. It's a... Yes? You'll be getting it in a tick. A tick. Tick? A tick? <laughs> Correct! A gentleman's pocket match! Scuff! <laughs> Are you ready? This is a very tricky one, this. Hereby hangs a tail. In fact, two tails. Is it a book? No! Give me that! Is it a fish knife? Give me that! Is it a telecurry powder? Give me that! Is it one of those little ducks you hang on the wall? Oh, I know! But then it's on this cabby knicker! Absolutely fascinating. And you didn't manage to break the spell then? No, I'm afraid not. But we know how to break it now. And those special articles you asked me to get, what were they again? Ah, yes, the uh, eye tooth of a hippopotamus. I have one. I have one here on the enemy watch chain. Good <laughs> gracious me. <laughs> and, of course, a packet of ants eggs. By a strange coincidence, I was on the way to visit my maiden aunt, Miss Trumpshaw, well-known goldfish breeder. <laughs> Good for auntie. <laughs> and, of course, and, of course, a long buff envelope. I never travel without one. <laughs> now what? Well, you place the ants' eggs and the eye tooth into the long buff envelope. Yes. And now you drop into the envelope the five golden guineas. <laughs> so, it's nothing but a damn confidence trick. And to think, I nearly fell for your ridiculous story. Good day to you, sir. If I see you here again, I shall call a constable. Well, you blew it again, didn't you, Stanley? I nearly had him then. Oh, I nearly had him. Oh, Stanley, we've now got to go back to the jungle. How can we stay in civilization?